The story begins when a boy named Wang Tang sees himself on a mobile screen and says it is tough to believe that he is reborn. He is trying to relax and wants to understand the situation as soon as possible. He decides not to let what happened in his past life happen again. His fellows ask him if he is alright. He says he is fine but just a little tired. He tells him that he is not joining the other fellows tonight. He then sees one of his friends, Manrong, fighting with gangsters, and other fellows are cheering him up. He observes that Manrong is an advanced stage martial disciple and says these gangsters offended the wrong person. His friend finds him in deep thoughts and asks what's wrong with him today. He says he is just a little tired and is now home. While returning home, he asks what martial warriors are and wonders what is happening. He looks for it on Google. Google tells in detail that 30 years ago, dimensional rifts appeared worldwide. The splits are linked to an alternate world, the Xingwu continent. Forces exist in the Xingwu continent. Everyone there can become martial warriors by using this force to cultivate. Scientists have studied the staff and found that it might be dark matter. With the appearance of the space rift, the Earth seems to have changed in some way. Surprisingly, life on Earth was beginning to be influenced by dark matter. The plants became taller and lusher, and some extinct species reappeared on Earth. Animals had become more extensive, and their physical characteristics had been enhanced. The human body has also changed. Humans went berserk. The nations of the world united to explore the dimensional rift. The army had different specialists sent to the Xingwu continent. These people were called the pioneers. After some trials and errors, humans on Earth were able to cultivate. The countries came to a common consensus and made the cultivation methods public. Henceforth, it was the dawn of a new martial arts era. After knowing all this, Wang says fuck, this is too fantastic. This world has changed so much. When he reaches home, he calls his mom. His mother asks him to get cleaned up, the dinner is ready. He comes to his room and remembers that in his past life, the Wang family had offended someone, resulting in the downfall of their business. They only managed to preserve for a few months before his father's Zintang and grandfather's Rongsheng Sheng group went bankrupt and closed. When the Wang family went downhill, someone conspired against his father, Wang Shenguo, and had him murdered. And after some time, his mother, Lai Ziyume, also died of grief. He then chose to escape. He didn't expect that his weakness would result in his death. He says it wasn't until his end he realized that being more robust is the only way to keep the people he cares about from getting hurt. The next day, he comes to the Jixin Marshall House and says it is splendid, as expected of a top-level military academy. The security guard requests him to cooperate with the routine inspection. He observes the force runes are inscribed on the body of the gun, and this kind of force firearm is several times more potent than ordinary firearms, even if an official martial warrior got hit by them he would also be crippled. Then, he moves forward and tells the receptionist he is here for student registration. She says if he is a beginner, they recommend going to training hall number two to experience it. He comes to the training hall where many other students are doing training. He notices something on the ground, and when he sits down, he is surprised to see that a bug is found there. The other students think his brain is not working correctly as he is doing weird things. Wang says it looks like others can't see this bug. He then asks a person if it is possible that someone can the bug. A man holds him back and says he sees that Wang has fantastic bones, so he must be one of the best in martial arts. Then he asks him to pick one card. When Wang chooses one card, that person says it's a long way to go, he can't learn it now. First, he should come with him and practice the basics. He then starts practicing. He realizes that the Xingwu Continent's physical training exercise is the ninth set of radio exercises. The bubbles were too short, and the instructor delayed them for a while. Fortunately, a fat guy is dropping bubbles like a hen laying eggs, he says, but the numbers look better now. He didn't expect to pick up attributes like fist and footwork. After training, he returns home and tells his mother he is hungry. The mother says she left some egg noodles for him and asks him to sit down and she will bring them. While eating, his father asks him why he is late at home. He tells them he went to practice martial arts at Jixin Military House. His father says he was unwilling to do martial arts practice, is he all right now? Then Wang says he has sorted out his thoughts, so naturally, he wants to start practicing. His father says that since he wants to learn martial arts, he will hire the best teacher to teach him. 
Wang says he wants to see his talent first. Let him go to the martial arts school to practice for a few days. The father says well, the Jixin military house is one of the three martial arts giants in China, it has its own merits. After dinner, Wang says he is going to res, tomorrow is Seri, and he plans to go back to the martial arts house to practice. After he is gone, his mother says since the son wants to change, regardless of whether it is a three-minute fever, his father has to support him. She also says to his husband that tomorrow, he should ask people to buy more Star Beast meat, as it will help their son practice martial arts. He agrees and says he knows she loves him so much. The next day, Wang reaches the Jixin Martial House and says good morning to his seniors. After that, he starts his practice. He thinks his current skills are beginner stage martial disciple, and his strength corresponds to his physical strength characteristics, and speed, but he doesn't know how to convert this. He says that he aims to become an intermediate stage martial disciple today. A person observes him and says he was sick yesterday, but today, he looks good. Unfortunately, he is mentally disabled. It is better to stay away. While practicing, Wang says there is enlightenment to collect, and he has almost completed his essential sword skill, which he says is a replica of the Dark Shadow series, so he can try it out. After practicing swordsmanship twice, he went to practice boxing. The other people watching him say this disciple is diligent, but his brain is not good. He is a little stupid. When the instructor arrives, Wang calls him a teacher, but he says to stop asking him for a teacher, instead, call him senior brother Peng. When Wang asks him does he always come so early, Peng tells him that he is not so talented. He is 20 plus years old but still merely an advanced stage martial disciple. He can only work harder. He says he is going to the third floor for his practice. There will be another advanced stage martial disciple in charge of guiding him today. Of course, if he has any questions, he can ask them. Wang appreciates him and says Brother Pang is so devoted. Then he says now it is best to collect some wool. Soon, he sees a girl reading a book. He goes to her and asks if she believes in destiny. He says he found out she is practicing Great Buddha Pal, so he requests her to teach him too. Later, when students are going back, one student asks him if he is not still leaving at night. But he replies that he will retire later. When he returns at night, his mother asks him to eat properly. She also inquires about his practice today. He says it was not bad and tells his parents that his senior brother from the Martial Arts Academy said he is talented. The mother says that the boy has grown up. His father says it's good that he is talented but he should practice well and asks him not to worry about martial arts resources. Then he tells his wife that this kid is no longer a non-student, and when he becomes a senior martial artist, he will show off to his brothers. While Wang is thinking that he would rather not talk about the intermediate martial arts apprenticeship so as not to make dad and mom feel unreal. While eating, he receives a call from his friend, who tells him they are already at the Rose Pub and asks him to come over quickly. He asks them to wait as he will arrive soon. When he tells his parents he is going out for a little while, his father says he has practiced all day, so he must relax and not play around. But his mom supports him and says go early and return early. When he reaches Rose Pub, he says what a familiar feeling. He has not been here since the Wang family had declined. He says he can't fall into depravity anymore. He was born again to change all this. When his friends see him, they say hello and ask why he is late. Wang laughs and says the night is young, and the fun is just starting, so there is no reason for him to arrive early. Then he takes a drink and says he will punish himself with a drink. He tells his friend Yu Hao that he has not seen him for a long time. Hao says that he got dragged by his father to learn martial arts. He had to sneak out today to come here. He also informs them that he is already a beginner stage martial disciple. Wang says now Hao is the only martial disciple among all of them. If someone bullies them in the future, they will seek his help. Then Bai Wai tells Wang that they have waited so long, and now he has sent them off with just one drink. They both laugh at their discussion. Wang asks about a person named Yuan Jenghua. He is being told that that fellow is following Lai Rongcheng now. He's his lackey. He won't be coming. Wang says everyone has their aspirations. There is nothing much to be said. One of their fellows says no need to talk about that fellow anymore. Just his name is enough to make him angry. Suddenly, a man arrives, says hello to a pretty girl, Bai Wai and asks her to play with him. But Wang grabs him and asks him to stay away. That person says how he dares to stand in his way. Hao tells Wang that this sinister looking guy is at the peak level of beginner stage martial disciples. He is close to the intermediate stage disciple. That person attacks them, but Wang punches him hard and says how he dares to touch his people. When that man calls him an intermediate martial disciple and says, intermediate stage martial disciples are not great. Wang laughs and says sorry, intermediate stage martial disciples can do anything they want. 
When Wang asks him to tell his name if he dares, then he asks them to wait for him to call his men. Wang asks what he is afraid of. Wang introduces himself as Lai Rongcheng and says he will give him half an hour to call his men. If he will late, then Wang won't wait for him. Bai Wai says brother Wang is so bad, as he pushes the blame on Lai Rongcheng. If Rongcheng knew what Wang did, he would probably hate him to death. When the bar staff tells the hotel manager, they go without paying the bill. The manager says he can't stop them as this kid is an intermediate stage martial artist at a young age, which means his background is extraordinary. Zhao Gangbao got drunk and caused trouble today, and it's all his fault, so he does not want any trouble again. He says he would better tell the boss about this. Bai Wai sends messages to Wang before sleeping and tells him she has reached home and is going to sleep. The next day, when Wang reaches Jixin Martial House, he sees many people are already practicing there. He says these people are so early, and they are hardworking. However, on this path of diligence, he, Wang Tang, will not admit defeat. He sees a notice board congratulating him for obtaining basic sword skills, footwork, strength, and first skills. He becomes so happy and says this is a good start. He then moves out and says it's time to look at the second floor. But he is stopped by an instructor who says, based on the rules of the martial arts academy, a beginner stage martial disciple is not allowed to go up to the second floor. Wang says she thanks him for his reminder and says that yesterday night, he accidentally broke through and became an intermediate stage martial disciple. Students start gossiping about him. Someone says he became an intermediate stage martial disciple after practicing for two days. That's impossible. It is said that he must have practiced martial arts before he came to the martial arts academy. By looking at him, he is a rich second generation. The poor study while the wealthy learn martial arts. His family is influential, so he learned martial arts earlier than other students. It's easier for him, too. Wang enters the second floor and observes people here are rich. He sees a fatty boy training alone. He goes to him and says there is no fun training alone, and he promises to train with him. He asks him to remember him as a big brother. Wang asks him to have a little match, but the fatty boy refuses and starts practicing alone. Wang observes him and notices he is faster than him. He says this fatty is much more exciting than the last time. After a while, the fatty boy shakes his hand with him and says from now on, Wang will be his big brother. Wang asks him not to worry, they are a win-win, and he will cover him in the future. Wang also asks other students who else wants to practice swords, guns, and fists with him. But no one responds to him. Instead, people say this kid is more stupid than he looks. He was like this on the first floor, too. Wang asks the fatty boy to practice on his own now, and his eldest brother will go one versus one for a while. The rich boy observes his boss has sand in his hands. Wang continues his practice alone, and he says now he is almost at the level of an advanced stage martial disciple. And sure enough, this bug practice is fast. The inexplicable rebirth and this bug are not so simple, but he has to rely on them now. The next day, during the lunch break, Bai Wai comes to see him and says brother Wang Tang, it's been so hard to call him lately, and he doesn't come every weekend. He says he has been a little busy recently and will talk about it when he is free. Suddenly, the students are surprised when they see Yu and Zheng Hua arrive there. Bai Wai says the pig head beside him is a Lai Rongcheng, but he is beaten up so badly. They all look at Wang, who asks them to stop looking at him like this and says he didn't do this. Rongcheng shouts at students laughing at him and says a pig's head is considered a heavenly martial, ugly and wide. When he attacks them, Wang holds his hand, calls him Lai Shao, stops him, and says this brother of him is just talking, don't take it to heart. But he says he will take it to heart today. Wang pulls his arm hard, cries, and says let go of his hand. Wang smiles and leaves his hand as he wishes, but he falls. Wang says he just asked him to let go of the hand, don't accuse him now. He runs away with his friends by warning Wang and saying it's not over yet, and challenges him to come to the Marshall Stadium after school. After they are gone, Wang's friends ask him if he is going to fight with him and if he is confident that he can beat Lai Rongcheng. But Wang replies that he didn't say he was going. After some time, when they are sitting in their class, Rongcheng comes there with his people and says he knows that Wang is trying to trick him, so he arrives there and asks him to let's start fighting here. Wai Bai calls Rongcheng a shameless man and says brother Wang did not say what to use while he already picked what's handy to him. But Wang holds his hand on her head and says it's okay and the result will be the same. Rong Cheng says no matter what Wang uses, he will lose this time. He will show Wang what it means to be a master of the blade. The fight begins, and Wang decides to end it soon. He uses his essential blade skill to attack Rong Cheng, which soon falls. He asks his people to carry him away as he is just dizzy. 
After they are gone, Wang's friends appreciate him for instantly defeating Lai Rongcheng and calling him so powerful. Wang says the speed was a big part of the reason for the easy victory over Lai Rongcheng today. He then comes to a bar where he sees Lin Chahan working part-time again. She is surrounded by two fellows telling her that it's late they will take her home after work. They live on the same road and will give her a ride. Another girl arrives there and shouts at the men and says both of them are 108,000 miles away from Chu Hen's house, so they must mind their own business. Chu Hen also thinks she can go back by herself. Wang comes to the counter and says hello, beauty, give him a cup of milk tea. Chu Hen recognizes him and says she can't believe it's him. He laughs at her. When her fellows inquire about Wang, she says he is my deskmate. They are surprised and say this is not like an ordinary roommate. He feels like Lin Chuhan is getting annoyed by these bastards. He asks her when she will get off work, as he got off work just too, so it is better to go home together. He says he will take care of the escort today. When they come outside, she thanks him and says she will return by herself. But he says it is better to go with him as those two men still chase her. So she accepts his offer and sits on his ride. He asks her to hold on to him, as she might fall. Before going, Wang warns those men that when they call her name later, remember to include her last name. On the way, Wang says class president, as he helped her to solve two troublemakers, so how will she thanks him? She says she will help him with the college entrance exam. She stops him at one place and says she will go home by herself from here, and it's easier for him, too. He asks her to look into her basket, where a milk tea is placed. He says it's for her, he disliked the taste and has not had this in a long time. Then he says it's too late, so it's time to go home. She says she feels like he has been acting weirdly lately, like a different person. He asks her not to worry too much, and when she goes, he hears a gunfire. The shooter tells his boss that the police will be here soon, so he advises to take Wang as a hostage. Wang tries to run. The shooters ask him not to run and come towards them. He requests them not to shoot, as he will cooperate with them. He knows these outlaws dare shoot, so he tries to calm down. When he comes close to them, they hit him and hold him by the collar, then they throw him in a van and move from there. A person asks him that all the time, he grabs him and runs. But instead of him, Wang is still painting. Wang says that he is just an ordinary person. He is also tired of being caught. The van driver says that cops are coming after them, and the boss orders them to get rid of them. The driver informs that the cops are shooting. Then the boss changes his strategy puts a gun on Wang's head and asks the cops to put their weapons. Otherwise, he will shoot Wang. When the police stop, the boss of the criminals shoots them and asks them to keep dreaming of catching up with him. Wang thinks these criminals even dated to kill the police, and now the police are left behind. He says he will also be dead soon. Soon the van stops in a jungle, Wang is thrown out of the van, and he is asked not to try to be innovative. It is said to the boss that they will be in the wall market after this forest. They will be able to escape the cops. Wang observes that they have just run, and they're not paying attention to him, so he has a chance to run too. He says they are all bad people, so he doesn't have to feel burdened. He attacks the boss and kills him. The criminals are shocked to see that the kid has murdered their boss. Wang puts his foot over the boss's body. One of the criminals asks others not to worry and asks them to shoot him as it is essential to save their lives. But Wang snatches the gun, and the person whose gun is seized tells his fellows that his gun is out of bullets, so they do not worry and attack him. Wang does not let them attack him. Instead, he kills all criminals all alone. When it is over, he feels nauseous. He says it is uncomfortable but must get used to it soon. Another person, who is hiding in the bushes, appears and tries to shoot Wang. But Wang handles it and says how he could be made such a big mistake if the shot hadn't been aimed wrong. He didn't realize that there was a sixth gun. He held it and said the police probably didn't know about it so that he could bet on it. Soon, the police arrive at the spot. One officer says all the prisoners die, and the survivor is terrified. When they come close to Wang, he asks them not to come close. The police officer says this kid is an advanced stage martial disciple, and it looks like he killed the gangster. He further says it is a pity that he is a student after all, and he hopes this incident will not have a profound impact on him. He orders his people to record a confession when he is in a better mood. He says it's these people's fault. The next day, Wang comes to the school. He says the system can also pick up learning attributes, so he becomes curious about the origin of the system. Yu Hao says that if he is free this weekend, they should plan to go to the party at Ju's house. But when Wang says he is not accessible as he is going to the Jixin Marshall house this weekend, Bai Wai asks him not to be so dull. She advises him to combine work and rest. He says alright, he will relax then. 
On the weekend, they come to the party. Wang feels so uncomfortable and says he should not have been soft-hearted. Socializing with this name is more tiring than practicing martial arts. Miss Zhu apologized to everyone for keeping them all waiting, as there was a delay in the party. Yu Hao admires Miss Zhu is so beautiful. They also see Lai Rongcheng at the party and become curious about how he got into the Zhu family's lap. Wang asks them not to worry about it and that whoever he is with, eat peacefully and eat less at parties. Miss Zhu talks to Wang and says he seems a little unfamiliar and asks from which family talented youth like him have come here. Wang says they are just ordinary guests, not worthy of Miss Zhu's attention. Someone tells Miss Zhu that this is the fifth young master of the Wang family, Wang Tang. Miss Zhu says she is honored to have the youngest of the Wang family. Then Miss Zhu tells everyone next is the night's highlight, so please move to the hunting ground. She says she has prepared a secret gift for the person who catches the most prey. Wang says this is a coincidence. He just got a small achievement in gun skill from an outlaw, and he hopes to find a chance to practice in the blink of an eye. Yu Hao says brother Wang Tang, all of Zhu's shotguns have runes, so they must go and play for a while. When Wang asks about Bai Wai, Hao says she said she wanted to play with water guns so that they could go by themselves. Soon Wang shoots a rabbit. Hao says brother Wang Tang, it's fantastic, they even didn't see this rabbit clearly, and Wang hits it perfectly. Wang says if they go further into the woods, they might be able to find better prey. When they move ahead, they see Rong Cheng shooting at people. They ask him to stop attacking his people. When Lai Rong Cheng asks Wang why he is here and where is the white wolf, Wang says Mr. Lai, give him face, this white fox, and he has a destiny, let him keep it. Miss Zhu thinks she will let him keep it, Mr. Wang and she also feels that this white fox is entirely spiritual. Wang says thanks to Miss Zhu. Suddenly, they hear an unusual sound. Miss Zhu asks them not to panic and advises them to return to their residence immediately. She asks her security guard to go and see what's going on. Wang says, as expected of the Zhu family, the strength of the bodyguards has reached the level of an advanced stage of the martial disciple. He also decides to take a look, look after the white fox, and be quiet. Miss Zhu asks his people to hurry back to the villa. She observes Wang and says this Wang's boy is in an advanced stage of a martial disciple. His strength is marvelous, and he should be above Lai Rongcheng. The bodyguard returns and tells her that the sound came from far away. He checked all the nearby areas and did not notice anything unusual. After observing the surroundings, Wang says the martial warriors caused this scene. He says he would rather not die for this kind of thing. The most important thing is to rely on the system of obscene development. He says, but martial warriors will drop attribute bubbles when they fight. He says he has already been fired several times, and he should be dead. Fortunately, the last time he hid the gun in a bird's nest five kilometers away, the police did not find it. Otherwise, he would have been lying there. He notices that something has happened to the attribute panel. He says, sure enough, the two attributes of ice and fire will quarrel, so he must bet. Soon, he felt his bet was correct. This system does work. When they come back to the villa, Miss Zhu tells Lai Rongcheng that Wang Tang is very secretive. Being an advanced stage martial disciple, he must have found out something. On the other side, Yu Hao tells Wang that he was seen by Zhu Beiyun when he left. They were mainly waiting for him to come back. Wang says it's a little careless to be caught, but it does not matter anymore. He then says Miss Zhu is joking and is sure he is a disciple who does not have as much information as her battle-hardened bodyguard. She asks then why he had been so long. Wang says that's nothing. He went out purely to satisfy his curiosity, and as a result, nothing unexpected was found. He guessed that warriors were fighting, and a fire broke out where the explosion occurred. He really cannot get in, and Miss Zhu's bodyguard also found the fire, so he returned. And just when he came back, he was a little bit crazy, so he took a detour. Miss Zhu says Wang Tang won't feel that he is just a mediocre person who will listen to him after he explains a few words. Wang says if Miss Zhu does not believe it, then she should not bother to ask it. Instead, she must try a lie detector. Miss Zhu tells Rong Cheng that since they are all together, it is not suitable to continue the meeting today, so they should all go back. Wang also tells his fellows to go back. Bai Wai requests Wang to give her a lift as she does not have a bike. After coming home, Wang says it is good that he went today. Otherwise, he would never have been able to gain so much. This time, he is rich, these rune weapons are worth several million. He says dad only gave him three million, so he spoiled him so much. No wonder he was poor and prosperous. Then he pulls out a massive egg from his bag and says this is what these two warriors were fighting for, and he does not know their cultivation base. It is all cheaper for him. He says he does not have any attribute talent himself, if he did not have the system, he would not be able to become a martial warrior in this life. 
When he wakes up the following day, he says he slept better than those after his kneeling practice. When he comes to school, he says, luckily, he is not late. His fellows thank him because they are all given the opportunity just because of him. They tell him that the Ministry of Education has issued a notice that this year's martial arts course will be expanded, and intermediate stage martial arts disciples can also take the exam. One of them says, fortunately, Brother Wang Teng told them this news in advance. Otherwise, they were afraid they would not have time to study. Wang says they are all classmates, so do not forget him if they succeed in their martial arts exams. Wang tells Cha Han that people are too enthusiastic, and she is also an intermediate stage martial disciple. She has been reading martial arts books lately and should also want to participate in the exam. Later, he says meditating all night is fine. He falls asleep after five minutes of class. He then goes to the pet store to see if the eggs can hatch. While going, a star beast chases him. He says he has to run as there is no other way to escape from it. But star beast continues chasing him. He is curious why this giant bird is coming after him and says he is not the one who stole its baby. Then he realizes the bird is chasing him because he is carrying an egg in his back. He asks the bird to stop chasing, and he will give it the egg. He opens his bag and asks to take an egg from the pack. But actually, he does not want to lose the egg. Suddenly, an arrow from the other side hits the bird and kills it. Wang asks a man about the shooter who killed a giant bird with just one hand and said he must be strong. The person tells him that the shooter is a martial warrior from the City Protection Bureau, and he is meant to be powerful. Wang sees a star beast has also dropped attribute bubbles. He says the person who killed the giant bird with just one arrow has more vigorous bubbles. When Wang tries to come close to the dead bird, the security stops him and says not to come any closer for his safety. They will finish cleaning up as soon as possible, so he must wait a while. He knows about the City Protection Bureau, a special department formed to protect the human cities in this world. Besides the office workers, all others possess strong martial arts abilities. He makes a plan to buy an incubator and hatch the egg first. He remembered that he had left his bike, so he had to come back again. Later, when he comes to his room, he becomes curious about the spiritual sight talent he picked up today. His eyes look like he is wearing contact lenses. From a close look, it looks like a crow's eye, but how does it work? He observes the spiritual sight talent can see the fire force. He says, great, now he can use this to predict how strong or weak other martial warriors are. After this, he feels a little dizzy. Spiritual sight consumes spiritual energy. He says it looks like he cannot use it recklessly. But this talent still has a lot of potential. He should pay more attention to it in the future. Suddenly, spiritual sight activates and he feels like someone is approaching. From the force, it seems like he is a martial warrior. Wang starts fighting with him, and soon he kills a martial warrior. He obtains an earth element, another additional talent attribute. He says he is moving further toward becoming an all-rounder martial warrior. He knows the world of military warriors is perilous. He thinks of the ways to carry these two force weapons with him. The next day, he orders the custom-made weapon carrier casket. He becomes happy when he learns that the weapon carrier casket is ready, and the swords and gloves he found can be carried in it. But he becomes sad about spending a considerable amount of money on it. When the online shop asks him to enter his martial warrior ID number, he becomes irritated and asks what's wrong with this shop. They should send the item first, and he will give it the martial warrior ID number afterward. When he asks the shopkeeper online about this, he advises him to go to the martial arts association to get certified. He can only use the rune weapon when he has a certificate. If he has the certificate, then his baby will be shipped tonight. The next day, when the classes are dismissed, he stares at Chahan for a long time. When she asks him what happened, he says, class monitor. He has to go to the martial arts association later, so he will need her to cover for him at the teacher's side. She becomes furious that he is skipping class again. When she asks why he is going there, he says he has something significant to do. Then, he leaves the classroom. Cha Han knows the Martial Arts Association is the place to get a martial arts certificate, and she is curious how Wang Tang can get a certificate at this stage. On the other side, when Wang reaches the Martial Arts Association, he is stunned to see the magnificent building of the association. He says most people who come and go are martial artists, too. There are many people here, so he better be in disguise. So he wears a mask, enters the building, and tells the receptionist he is here to apply for a martial arts certificate. She asks him to follow her. He should follow the eye instructions in the room, pass the machine test, and he will be certified in less than 10 minutes. Afterward, when the test is completed, Wang is congratulated for becoming a martial artist, and he is asked to be patient while the certificate is being generated. 
Two other martial artists are also sitting in a room. One of them asks another, whose name is Lao Fu, to come over and take a look. The little boy named Wang Teng has become a martial warrior at the age of 17. Lao Fu says this name sounds a little familiar. He says that a few days ago, one of his staff handed him a data report. He thinks the information he received was about Wang Teng. The other person advises him to look at the surveillance, and he will know if it is the same person. Soon, he says that the reports show that this fellow rose from an average person to an advanced stage less than a month after joining their martial arts academy. Lao's fellows laugh and say they want to observe him again, but he has already become a military warrior. It seems like he is a genius, and there will be a black horse in the martial arts exam this year. Then, both of them plan to go together and check it out. Finally, Wang received a martial warrior certificate. According to the rules of the association, there are a lot of perks that come with this card. He says, by the way, he has to hurry up and let Master Lu send him the goods. First, he decides to come back to the class. When he reaches the course, Cha Han asks him to wait for her. After a while, when she returns, she feels confused about something. Wang asks if there is anything he can help her with. She tells it. She says she needs some money. When he asks how much she needs, she says it's 150,000. Although it is a lot, she promises to pay him back as soon as she gets the money from her part-time job after the exam. He asks her to give her a PayPal account and will transfer the money to her now. But he is curious about why she needs so much money. She again says she will return the money as soon as possible. He asks her not to worry about it or think about working, as taking the time to study now is the key. When she is gone, he wonders what difficulty she is facing. He decides to go and see it. When he follows her, he sees her entering a store. He knows her family runs a small shop, so it must be hard. A few goons arrive there and ask him what he is doing here. Their boss warns him that if he is found here again, he will be punished and his eyeballs will be pulled out. Then they go to the store and ask the store owner if they don't get the money today, they will destroy his shop. When Lin Chahen says the money is ready, the boss becomes surprised. Chahen's mother tells her daughter is already borrowing money from their relatives. She requests to give them a few more days. But the boss shouts at them and says he has already given them three days, that is more than enough. He says that it looks like they do not want to return the money. The mother tells the boss that they do not have such intentions. They have not gathered all the money yet, so he is requested to give them two or three more days. But the boss asks her to stop spouting nonsense and warns that he will destroy her shop if she does not give him the money today. He orders his people to kill the shop. Chahen stops him from doing this and asks him to take out the loan receipt. She says she will pay him back the 150,000 she owes him. He laughs and says she is pretty bold and how can she give him such a tremendous amount of money. She says she will transfer the money to him immediately and asks him to take it and leave their shop. He says she is right, as long as she returns the money to him, he will leave. However, 150,000 was three days ago. He thinks she is so pretty, so someone might be willing to lend her money. He says now they owe him 200,000. Her mother says it's been only three days, how did it increase to 20,000? Chahan says he is despicable, she can sue him as this is illegal. He asks her to go ahead, as he would not stop her, and also warns that it might be hard for her to continue opening their shop in the future. He further says that she still can't pay him back, but he says if she can become his girlfriend, he can forfeit this loan for her family. But her mother, this is impossible, don't even think about it. Even if she cannot open her shop anymore, don't even think about touching her daughter. Then he says, in that case, he won't be polite anymore. Then Wang Tang enters the shop and asks what he wants to be impolite for. The boss says this boy knows that girl and is trying to save the beauty. Wang says he is not here to keep beauty but just came to get rid of a few files. The boss orders his people to beat him to death. Wang asks them not to create a mess in the store of his class monitor's family. But they do not stop and come to attack him. Wang beat him hard and asked them to go out and play a couple of games. The boss sends two more people to attack him and says he is alone, so they must go together and not clump. But Wang beats them brutally. Then boss goes away, saying that it is not over yet and that he will see him later. Wang pulls out a mobile from one's pocket and throws it at the head of the boss, who falls. And he says this is why the boss should not talk nonsense when he was running away. Wang asks Cha Han to give the loan receipt when she gives it. He comes to know that they have borrowed 100,000, but the boss wants them to return the 200,000. He thinks this is much easier than being a robber. The boss says he knows it is his mistake, he was wrong, and he requests Wang to spare his life. Wang asks Cha Han to return the 100,000 only. She thanks him and asks, what is he doing here? He says she won't believe it if he says that he followed her. She becomes angry and says she is not talking to him anymore. She will go and take a look at her mum. 
Her mother also thanks Wang and says she will pay him back as soon as possible, and she also invites him to stay and have dinner with them. She asks Chahan to take little Tang upstairs for a seat, and she will go and get some ingredients immediately to make dinner. While going upstairs, Wang asks her about her father as he has not seen him in the store. She says he will see him later. They enter a room where her father is lying on a bed. Wang is shocked to see his condition. He is paralyzed. He asks her what happened to him. She says her father used to be a martial warrior, once back from the Xingwu continent. And that's it. Not only did he lose his legs, even his force nucleus was broken, and he came as a crippled. Wang says he never thought the world of martial artists would be more this cruel. He further states that since she knows how brutal the martial arts world is, why does she still practice and want to participate in the exams? She wants revenge as his dad's teammates said their rivals set a trap to get her dad into this mess, so she wants revenge. Wang asks her if her father's teammate knows her family's situation now. She says that most of the time, they are in the Xingwu continent and cannot return. This time, her younger sister's illness suddenly flared up, so her mother had no choice but to go to those people to borrow money. Wang is surprised to know that she also has a younger sister. She says he does not know about her and her illness. When he asks about her condition, she says it would be good if they could know what illness it is. She takes him to meet her sister, Chuxia. She knocks on her room's door, says she brought a friend over, and seeks permission to come in. When they are allowed to go in, Wang sees there are so many bubbles around her body. Chahan says it would be better for him to stay behind her and remember not to get too close later. Wang is surprised that there are so many attribute bubbles for even an ordinary person. He says it cannot be related to her strange illness. When he touches bubbles, he comes to know that these bubbles have poison force, demon lotus poison. He is shocked that this kind of force existed. He finally absorbed it and almost got caught. Her sister, Chuxia, becomes curious when she sees that he has a connection to the toxin. Chauhan asks him if he is alright as he is sweating so much. He says it's probably because he is nervous standing with them. Chauhan then introduces him to her sister and says he is Wang Tang and he is her friend. Wang feels terrible for a poor girl who even can't go out. He thinks the demon Lotus's poisonous body is a rare physique neither martial arts nor medicine can solve. She will always be overflowing with deadly force. Now he understood why Lin Chahan did not allow him to get close to her. But he comes closer and says hello. Chahan stops her and states do not go over. Chuxia asks him if he fears her face and the air around her. Wang puts his hand over her head and asks her to look at him. He is not affected by all of this. When she asks how it is possible that he is not involved, he says it's probably because he always drinks goji berry tea, so his immunity is better. He further says if she does not believe him, she can touch him to confirm it. She feels he looks alright when she touches his hand, and the sticky feeling around her has disappeared. She hopes maybe this person can cure her. Chahan asks Wang if he knows something. She hopes he can tell her, as it is essential for their family. He asks her not to worry. He will tell her immediately if he has a solution. Then Chahan hugs her sister and says do not worry about anything. She has already applied for the martial arts exam and will become a military warrior and help her find a cure for her strange illness. But her sister says she remembers that mom does not allow her to practice martial arts. Wang says no wonder the class monitor is working so hard. He did not expect to gain the poison force. He can mix a little poison force with other troops in future battles. He says that although poisoning the other party before they can react is shady, it should not matter in a fight. After the dinner, Chauhan's mother asks him to come again, and he thanks her for everything today. He then feels that his proficiency in gun skills is still a bit low, so he decides to go to the shooting gallery tomorrow and see if there are any bubbles. On moving back, he hears people talking about a person who was an expert in gun shoots, and he used his best skill to kill the woman he loved most. That person is known as Gun God. Wang asks what happened after that. He is told that the person had a nervous breakdown and is now in a mental hospital in the western suburbs. Wang says the western suburb mental hospital looks like it is worth a trip. When he comes to the hospital, he sees the doctor on duty. He says he has to get him out of the way to get in. He makes some unusual noise. Doctor stands up to see what it is, and Wang hits him from the back. As a result, the doctor falls and becomes senseless. Wang says this way, he won't get any problems. He then wears a doctor's coat and mask and enters the hospital. He sees people with a mental health condition can drop their spirit attributes. He sees a patient who tells Wang that he is the creator of the world. Wang visits various rooms, but he cannot find Gun God anywhere. Then he enters the last room and sees the patients insides have a significant presence, and he has a lot of bubbles around him. 
Wang thinks he may be the god of guns. When Wang comes close to him, the patient says young man, it is remarkable that he has become a martial warrior at such a young age. When Wang asks how he knows about it, the patient says the feelings, as well as force, after all, he used to be all of this. He further says it has been a long time since he smoked, so if Wang had a cigarette, it would be good. Wang gives him a box of cigarettes that he stole from his father. While in return, the patient says he can give him one thing that Wang wants. He gives him a USB. The patient says he wants to sleep so that Wang can leave now. Also, remember to turn off the lights while leaving. Wang comes out of the room and says he can't believe that he collected 55 spirit attributes in a mental hospital. And that is a pleasant surprise. He says this place is too rash, so it is better to go home and see what is in the USB. While inside the room, the patient laughs that this kid believed what he said. He is going to get a big surprise soon, he laughs. On coming back to home, Wang turns on his computer and connects USB to see what is in it. He learns that Gun Kung Fu integrates martial arts and technology when he sees it. Gun Kung Fu is a fantastic ability that incorporates body strength, gun skill, and sword skill into one whole. This means gun skill has been changed to Gun Kung. He thinks of ways to improve this attribute. He decides to buy some rune bullets, but he has to focus on exams and try to pass the martial arts exam first. A few days later, the news reporter says two days are left before the college entrance exams. Donghai TV wishes all the candidates good results. Wang is also watching TV with his family. His father asks him not to be nervous about the college entrance examinations. He can retake the exam next year. His mother also says she and his father are mentally prepared, so he doesn't have to be stressed. She also asks him not to come back with a duck in the test because, in such a case, she and this father would not be able to go out and talk to people. His father also repeats it and says if he gets duck in the test, then he will say that Wang is not born to be a martial artist. Wang says his parents have so little faith in him. When he succeeds in the martial arts exams, he will give them a big surprise. The next day, the teacher asks the students to keep their exam cards and not let their three years of hard work go to waste because of a small mistake. He then announces to distribute the martial arts exam passes and call those whose names are on the list to get their passes. Lin Chahan, the class monitor, is also participating in the martial arts exams. Wang Tang is also given the access to join in the exam. After coming home, Wang's parents asked him if he had signed up for the martial arts exams and did not inform them. He said he was practicing martial arts to appear in the exam. His father is worried as he hears that the martial arts examination consists of a real battle. But Wang has not been practicing martial arts for a long time, so his father fears that Wang is just going there to become cannon fodder. His mother asks him not to fool around with his life. He asks them not to worry about it and says if he cannot even pass the intermediate stage martial disciple exam tomorrow, he won't have to participate in the actual combat. The next day, buses arrive to pick up the students to take to the examination center. Wang says goodbye to his dad and asks him not to worry about it. Father advises him to take care of him and says remember, safety comes first. If he fails this time, he can come back and try next year. He also tells his son that the road to martial arts is difficult and wishes he gain great power and changes his ordinary life. Wang sees Cha Han and thinks she is waiting for him, but she says she is not explicitly waiting for him. Then they get on the bus. When the bus moves, he says this the same way that goes to the Polestar Martial Arts Hall and assumes their ranking test will be held there. He also hears that the Huying Private Middle School students are also coming to participate in the exam. He knows that Huying Private Middle School is excellent and has eight senior martial arts students. They see an officer from the Inspector General's office when they reach. Wang cannot understand the presence of the inspector here. Cha Han says she has heard that in the early days, there were many cases of cheating. The situation only improved after the Inspector General's office interfered in the exam. Then Wang says he is going first and will meet her after the exam and they will eat together. Inside the exam hall, an examiner holds a list of the candidates and announces their names. Wang Junming, having a strength of 362, speed of 6.8 seconds, and physique of 56, has passed. With a power of 298, a rate of 6.9 seconds, and a form of 51, Zhang Dali is declared to have failed. Zhang fights with the examiner and says he is already an intermediate stage martial disciple. He wants to do the test again and go for his inspection again. Other students get nervous and go to get ready as there will be only one chance. The exam jury discusses the exam details and asks Master Fu and President Kin about what they expect and how many good seeds will emerge this year. 
They say they do not know about the rest, but they know there is a potential general stage talent. They also say that today is just a rank evaluation, so a student named Wang might not display his full potential. He can get into a good university even if he does not release his full potential. Then Wang Tang is called to come forward and take a test. He comes to take the test, and after the test, the test results show that he has a strength of 1000 kilograms, a speed of 100 meters in 3 seconds, and a physique of 100. He has passed the test. An examiner is shocked to see that all the three test score reached their limit values. Other students think he is cheating, but they know it should not be possible with the inspector here. The examiner also says to be honest, he also feels that the results are somewhat unreal. But Wang Teng passed the exam with full marks. This is a hidden talent. He is awesome. Wang comes to see Cha Han and asks about his performance. She also admires him and says she did not know he was so strong. When he inquires about her test, she says her martial arts score is not as good as his, she barely passed the exam. Lai Rongcheng also appeared in the test, and his result comes with a strength of 812, a speed of 4.8 meters, and a physique of 83, and with this, he also passed the test. He is not happy with his results and says he was influenced by Wang Tang and acted abnormally. Wang says Rongcheng cannot blame him for his performance. Cha Han says Wang should call his family and tell them about his test. When he calls, her mother asks about his trial and wants to know when he will return, as she is cooking for him now. She also says it's alright if he did not pass, as they are mentally prepared, so he can come home and prepare to repeat his year obediently. He then tells her mom that he passed the level inspection, so she should not worry. His mother becomes delighted, hugs his father, and says their son has passed the exam. His father also says as expected of his son. He can rest assured while going on a business trip tomorrow. Father tells him that he will take him out for a meal when he returns. Then he says he should prepare for the next actual combat test. One of his fellows, Young Giant, congratulates him and says he was hiding his real strength till now. He also says although he used to have good eyes, he could not see through him. Wang asks him as his uncle is from the Education Bureau, so it would be good if he tells them what is going to happen in their actual combat exam. Yang Jian says this is a secret, and the location of the actual combat test is different every year, so he cannot know in advance. Then, a principal comes towards them and tells Wang that, indeed, he is a fine-looking man, and he is extraordinary. Wang asks principal if he has any unique martial arts skills that he wants to pass on to Wang so that he can go and save the world. The principal says he is a funny student. He says they have a reward system for martial arts students. If he enters the top 50 rankings, he will be rewarded with energy stones. The top 3 will be rewarded with an extra bottle of elixir. If he can get the first position, not only will he get the previous rewards, but he will also get a mysterious reward that will not disappoint him. Wang's friends ask him to get the first ranking. He says he will try to win for the school. Energy stones and elixirs are necessary for a martial warrior to make a breakthrough. It is very precious, the principal seems to have paid much money. Then buses come to pick them up. When they reach the place, Wang says he never thought they were going to live in a barracks. It seems like they are going to take the actual battle test there. An inspector tells them this is where they will stay tonight, and tomorrow's exam value is elsewhere. They all are ordered to obey military rules. Otherwise, their qualification for the examination will be cancelled immediately. Later, Yang Jian's uncle comes to meet him and says he also wants to talk to Wang Tang for a few minutes. Wang comes outside and asks Uncle Liu why he is looking for him. Uncle says he is not the one looking for him. Instead, he is someone who wants to meet him. He then brings him to the chief's office, who welcomes student Wang Tang. Wang says he wants to know why he is looking for him. This must be the Ministry of Education. Chief tells Wang that he is already a martial warrior, but Wang says he is just a martial disciple. He can't be a military warrior. Chief says it does not matter if he admits it, but he hopes he will do well tomorrow. If he shows his martial warrior's power tomorrow, he will be rewarded with a star bone. Wang feels the essence of the star beast. He knows that only a powerful star beast can produce a star bone. He has also heard that star bones also contain special abilities that can be attached to weapons when they are made. He becomes curious about why the chief is willing to take out such a precious thing. Then Uncle Liu says he is doing this just for promotion. To be honest, they can see a lot of potential in him. And chief says he hopes Wang can be an opportunity for him to further his career. Wang feels this older man is so straightforward. Although the star bone is good if he reveals his martial warrior ability during such a momentous occasion, he does not know what big trouble it might cause. The chief says he does not know Wang is worried about what 
but he says a martial warrior must fight. Military warriors must consume considerable resources to reach the top and fight for them from other people's hands. So even if he hides his skills now, he will not be able to hide forever. Wang says that is right, the martial warriors he met before were all competing for resources. They were also forcing him to fight for it. The chief further says he has great potential, but if he does not have the right mentality to complement it, he might not be able to walk far in the future. Then he asks him to forget it and pretend they do not meet tonight. When Wang moves back, the chief says he is so intelligent and did not take the bait at all. Uncle Lu tells chief that this excitation method is useless to him, but he will accept this deal. Wang turns back and asks chief to give him a star bone. The chief says he must be dreaming as he demands the reward before the result is out. Wang says if the head does not give it to him now, he will not know whether he will keep his word or not. Then, the chief asks him to sign a contract. So, a deal is done. The next day, a giant airship lands on the ground. Students see there are runes on the airships. The military officers wish all students that all of them will be able to pass the actual combat, assessment and hope that everyone will come back alive. They are asked to get on the airship so they can head to the venue of the real combat exam. While sitting inside, students say this should be a force floating airship. Wang says it is a massive airship with runes drawn in its carrier to activate force as its driving force, so this is not the same as their force cars and details airplanes. The other student says he heard that the technology for building the force airships came from the Xingwu continent. It differs significantly from their technology. He is unsure about the details. Wang calls him just a blockhead. Shahen was surprised to know that there are technology products in the Xingwu continent. Another student says who knows, there seem to be restrictions in place, but if they become martial warriors, they will have a chance to go to the other world. Wang asks Cha Hun if her father ever said anything about it earlier. She says he never told them anything. Also, at that time, she was very young. After that incident, he would not mention it anymore. The student near them thinks these two people have some secret he does not know. They see the ship is about to land on an island. None of them expected to have an actual combat test on an island. Two more airships have landed there. They are probably from other regions of Donghai. Students are welcome to the third exam venue for the Donghai region, and it is informed that protective battle uniforms and weapons are prepared for all of them, so they should come up and collect them after name calling. Finally, they wish the examiners a safe return. After getting his weapon, Wang asks an officer if he is allowed to use this weapon after its inspection. The officer says yes, he can use it if there is no problem after during the inspection. So the officer starts the examination, says his weapons case is not too bad, and says it's all one-star rune weapons. When Wang asks if it is allowed to use, he is informed that it's up to him whether he can make use of the weapon's full power. Of course, it is allowed. Wang then asks the officer to give him a light battle suit. He gives him the most lightweight battle suit they have but says it lacks defense, so he needs to be more cautious. After wearing his uniform, he sees Cha Han coming towards him, and she says it looks like her uniform is too odd. Wang says no, it is very flattering on her. They see monsters coming to the battlefield. He says it seems like the class president is looking afraid as it might be difficult for the class president to handle monsters. But she says she is fine. Another student says he thought the combat tests would be a piece of cake, but now he is a little scared. Wang says it is expected to be afraid. Look around, everyone is looking afraid. Then, the officer comes and asks everyone to be attentive. The test is starting soon, and he will be reading the rules. The test is from 10 a.m. to 6 a.m. tomorrow. Students have to survive in this tropical rainforest. They prepare their food, water, and shelter. To pass the test, they must kill at least five monsters. The stronger the monster, the higher the points they will obtain. They will receive more university opportunities with higher points. They are also informed that the tracker on their battle suit is connected to their satellite. They will monitor them throughout the test. They can also press the emergency button when in danger, which means they will be disqualified. Besides, they are not allowed to kill other candidates during the test. But competition will be present. Not only will they need to be wary of the monsters, they have to be careful of other candidates. It is also said that although the test is essential, their life is more precious. So they do not push themselves too hard. There is only hope if they survive. That is all. Then, students are asked if anyone wants to quit the test. One of the students says she wants to leave as she does not want to gamble with her life. After that, students are informed that they will be shuffled into 10 groups and sent into the forest from different entrances. Wang asks Cha Han not to be too nervous and try her best. He then leaves after wishing her good luck. The officer then asks everyone to go inside and wishes them luck. 
Then the exam starts. Wang comes to the forest. He says he did not meet any monsters for an hour. When he finally saw one, it was a high-level monster. His luck is not too bad. It has not noticed him yet, so he should deal a killing blow from behind. When he attacks, he feels it is so ferocious. He jumps over it and tells the stupid monster to watch for his sword. When he hits monsters, he sees it even dropped a blank attribute bubble. He thinks it could be possible that killing those monsters and star beasts will have a higher chance of dropping empty attribute bubbles. He says this forest is an excellent place to farm blank attributes. On the other hand, it was reported in the examination controller center that a candidate had killed the first high-level monster. He is pretty good and has impressive combat awareness. Of course, he is the only pinnacle martial apprentice among the candidates from the East Sea. Commander Zhang, the commander of the East Sea, says to keep an eye on him. A few hours later, the panel is informed that half of the participants have already given up. The principal says it is about the same numbers as the previous years, everything is normal now. One of the teachers says this candidate called, Wang Tang has talent. He killed a few high-level monsters already. He thinks Wang should join his 100 Refinement Martial Arts Academy. He will definitely invest a lot of resources in him. The other teacher becomes furious and says he is a student of his Polaris Martial Arts Academy, so he must stop thinking about him with such an angle. On the other side, Wang sees a massive monster in the form of a snake, but he killed him also. He says this python was the same high-level mutated beast as the giant lizard, but this python was more challenging to handle than the giant lizard he killed previously. Suddenly, another beast attacks him from behind, but he says he has been waiting for it. If the monster thinks in the five years of martial arts exams and three years of mock papers, he has not learned anything yet, then this monster must be a fool. He says it attacked him from behind only in the search of death. He killed this monster, too. He is then attacked again from a different side. He moves towards that side and says this monster dared to attack him as if it is looking for death. But when he comes close, he sees another student attack him. He hits him back. When that opponent calls for help, Wang asks him to stop calling for help now, as there is no one to save him, and he should get beaten up by him. But soon, the two more warriors come to help him and call Wang Tang so ruthless. They say he is also an examinee, so how could he be so cruel to one of his fellows? Wang says he was wondering who could be so daring to attack him, but now comes to know that it was their beloved young master Lai Rongcheng. He further says he has defeated him so often that he cannot show his face around, which is why Rong Cheng wanted to make him silent for a lifetime in this martial arts exam. Rong Cheng asks Wang not to spot nonsense in front of him. He also says he invited these two advanced level martial disciples after paying a considerable sum of money, but they are no match for Wang Tang. Although both warriors try to kill Wang by using various military techniques, they fail. In the end, those warriors surrender in front of him, and Rong Cheng is shocked to see that the result is the same as before, and this Wang is even more powerful than before. Wang asks Rong Cheng to come forward and fight by himself. Suddenly, those warriors again attack him from the back, but Wang manages to dodge those sneak attacks. They say they are no match for him and are surprised how this is possible. Wang then attacks Rong Cheng and observes the attributes he dropped are like trash. It may be because of the gap of differences between their strengths. He calls himself too lazy to pick up these trashy attributes. He observes he can even drop a weapon type skill, so he thinks he must have some abilities. He says, after all, it did not go to waste to beat them up. He decides to squeeze him till he drops all the attributes he has. Those two warriors whom Rong Cheng brings say this person is like a devil, he is too cruel. They say it would be better for them to run from this place quickly. When they try to run, Wang moves towards them. They become terrified and ask what he wants from them now, as they have already admitted defeat. Now, what else did he want from them? They request Wang Teng to be a merciful man and spare them. Otherwise, please don't make such a move that will make him regret it. Wang smiles and asks them not to be afraid, as he will not hurt at all. After some time, he feels no more attribute bubbles are popping out from Rong Cheng's body, so he says it is boring now. So he pushes the help button on Rong Cheng's uniform, which displays an examinee gives up and seeks help. He is asked to wait as rescue teams are on their way. Wang leaves him there as rescue teams will come soon for his help. Then, he moves forward in search of more beasts. He says it is getting dark. Therefore, the number of beasts seems to have increased. He sees a lot of beasts and hopes to get more blank attributes. Soon, he killed all of them, and the empty details increased by 15 points, which was good for him. Suddenly, he feels something unusual in the forest. On the other side, Chahan also feels that extraordinary is happening and says it is an earthquake. It will be too dangerous if she stays here anymore. But then she says no, she cannot afford to give up. All the beasts start roaring. 
in the examination controller room. The controllers are also worried about what is happening in the forest. One of them informs them there is an extinct volcano on this island. Maybe some strange movements might have occurred inside the volcano, and all this commotion results from that problem. The commander of the team orders to end the examination immediately, and sends someone to investigate this matter immediately, and says the safety of all the examinees is their priority. Then, all the candidates are asked to pay attention to the announcement, which says there is a possibility that a volcano will erupt near the exam venue. That is why the test will end early. Please hurry towards the nearest exit at the fastest speed and leave the exam venue. The students are shocked to know that a volcanic eruption is possible, so they ran to escape and leave the place. The beasts are continuously growling, roaring, and howling. Wang does not go back, he stays there to see the volcanic eruption. When he sees the volcano, he feels the spiritual sight. The fire force from the volcano is very destructive and violent. He says the volcano may erupt. He also supposes that something else is happening inside the volcano. He also thinks about Lin Chahan and hopes she is fine wherever she is. Suddenly, he sees three martial warriors coming near the volcano, and he thinks they must be the warriors responsible for protecting the examinees. They should be heading toward the volcano mountains to check out the situation. He also decides to check out precisely what is happening inside the volcano. When he reaches there, he observes those martial warriors have incredible destructive battling power, and so many attributes bubbles have been dropped, so he should pick them up. He says if he does not follow them right now, he may lose the opportunity to collect the free treasure. But the direction they are advancing is the direction of entering inside the volcano mountains. He says if the volcano erupts suddenly, they will all die. So he quits his plan of following them and says his life is more important. While moving back, he sees an identity card. When he picks it up, he is shocked to see it's Lin Chahan's I quote D card and worries about where she is. He thinks she must have listened to the announcement and already evacuated this place, and in haste, she dropped her identity card here. But then he thinks she might be that unlucky who did not hear the announcement and went inside the volcano mountain. So, he must still go inside the volcano mountain to ease his suspicion. So he rushes towards the volcano mountains. When he reaches there, he observes the place contains a massive fire force, and because of it, the eruption could start, so the whole problem arises. The deeper he goes inside this place, the more he feels the temperature keeps rising, which makes the surroundings hotter. He says something may be weird about this cave that is producing a fire force of this enormous amount. He hears the roar of mutated beasts and says there are beasts inside the cave. Lin Chahan will be unable to deal with the beasts, and if she is inside the cave, the whole situation will be against her. He says the exam board is too unreliable. How can such an accident happen in the middle of the examination? He continues moving forward and thinking continuously about Chahan. He sees a lot of beasts, including salamanders, there and fears they might have eaten Chahan or she never entered these mountains. Those warriors are also inside the cave. One of the martial warriors asks his fellow, Lin Dong, if she is right. She says she is okay. The other says this volcanic salamander's magma burst is extremely powerful, so everyone must be careful from that magma burst attack. Wang sees them crossing the cave and says they dropped the fire force attributes. They are fighting with the beasts, but the salamander gives them a hard time. Their leader asks them to hurry up and leave this place and says these two volcano salamanders are too challenging to deal with. They will retreat first, but damn, a giant salamander blocked the way of their retreat. Wang, who is observing the situation silently, says these two star beats actually know how to cooperate. If these things do not change and go on like this, then these three martial warriors will soon be in danger. One of the warriors asks the other, whose name is Jai Quan, what they should do now. She replies that they can do nothing except fight for their lives and hopes other people will arrive here soon. If they come slightly later, they can only bury their corpses, she says further. So they decide to fight with beasts till their heart stops beating. Soon, Jai Quan says their attacks are fiercer, she can no longer hold them. Wang says they will not be able to leave or retreat from this place safely. Instead, he is sure that they will die here. He says, no, he can't just sit here and see them die one by one. The second warrior also says he has reached his limits. He doesn't think he can fight with them anymore. Suddenly, they all hear the frightening volcano salamanders cry in agony. Wang asks them to leave one bastard beats to him. He can handle him alone and asks them to work together to deal with another one. Jai Quan says that's great. Finally, reinforcements have arrived here. She asks them to attack these beats together and finish them off quickly. Wang uses his phantom ice fist skill to kill the beast. 
Jai Quan asks others to hurry up and says, looking at present circumstances, she is sure that it will not take long for the volcano's eruption, so hurry up and kill the beats. Otherwise, they will not be able to stop the volcano from erupting. Finally, they successfully kill the beasts and wonder how it is going on the other side. Will Wang be able to defeat that beast alone? On the other side, Wang also defeats that beast and says, finally, it is over. The star beats are tough to deal with. If he did not rely on his ice element, which had a natural advantage over the fire element, and the sneak attack, he might be unable to kill it so quickly. To deal with these star beasts, he has used blank attributes on a vast scale, and he says he gained those empty attributes after going through many hardships. It aches his heart very much. The martial warriors come close to him and ask if he is alright. When they see his uniform, they confirm from him that as he is an examinee, he killed the beats alone. When Wang says yes, he kills it alone, they look like they are shocked. Wang says, but he has gained so many attribute bubbles, it is noteworthy. The status window informs him he has also gained force attributes, which are water and wood type forces. He smiles, and it's great, now he has two more element force attributes that he did not have before. He has six different elements of force in his attribute panel. Jai Quan asks him if he is a martial warrior. She still can't believe that he killed the star beast all alone. He says he killed alone. Then he asks them if they have seen a girl with long hair and a pretty face, either on their way here or at another place inside the volcano. Jai Quan says she does not think they have seen such a girl. Wang says maybe he is overthinking. There is a possibility that she did not even come down here. As far as he knows about her personality, she is not the type of girl who pushes herself in danger and overestimates her abilities. He says it seems that it was not a volcano erupting but trouble caused by the mischiefs of these two star beasts. If there is not anything else, then he will leave first. Jai Quan asks him to wait a minute and says he killed this volcanic salamander. The body of this volcanic salamander is quite suitable for making weapons. There is even a chance it contains the fire element star core in its body. So, according to the rules followed by martial warriors, this salamander belongs to him. Wang says that this star beast was killed by him when he was in the middle of his actual combat assessment, so he may not have followed the rules. Quan says if he had not helped them, the three of them would probably be dead by now. So this star beast belongs to him. Then, he gladly accepts it. When Wang gets a star core, they say he is so lucky that he even got a star core, as star cores are very rare. Quan says they have killed so many star beasts before, but they have not got a single star core. Wang laughs and says maybe, it happened because he is more handsome than all of them. During their discussion, the rescue team arrives there, and Governor Jiang and Director He come by themselves and says these guys have already resolved the issue. Wang observes this person has so much aura. He also says if he had not practiced martial arts this time, based on his current status and identity, he would never have been able to meet someone like him. The governor talks to Wang and tells him that he has seen his performance during the actual combat assessment, which is not bad. Wang says he is speaking too highly of him. The governor then talks to three martial warriors and says they all have killed these two star beasts in time and prevented the volcano from erupting, so they deserve merit. Then, two more people come from outside and tell the governor that all the examinees have been sent to safe places. However, the number of deaths is very high. When the governor asks Jai Quan if she killed both beasts by herself, she tells him they only killed one of the two star beasts. The other star beasts were killed by Wang Tang here. She further says that without the help of Wang Tang, they would not have been able to complete this mission. The members of the rescue team are shocked to know that this kid killed the beasts all alone. They say it seems like this kid is extremely talented and has reached the level of a martial warrior. He can kill a star beast alone, and it is incredible. It seems like this kid has a bright future ahead. The governor and the director ask Quan to be responsible for her words and not compromise her interests. She says if they do not believe her, they can go and take a look at the wounds on the salamander's corpse. The force on it is different from theirs. The director says yes, she is correct, the point is other, and this is the ice force. The governor appreciates Wang and says he did not expect that there would be such a genius in this year of actual combat assessment who will have a mutated force, and says their Donghai will shine this year, and no one dares to look down on them. Then, the team members offer him to join their martial house. One asks him to join his Balian military house, and he can make any request if he is ready to join his martial home. While others say if he enters their lading martial house, he will be provided with everything for his development. While the third one asks the other to stop talking nonsense and says Wang is a member of his Jixin martial house, they are so shameless as they are trying to snatch his man right in front of him. 
The director says, all right, they are in their 30s and 40s, but they are still fighting like children. They should feel embarrassed about it. Then, he asks everyone to follow him down the mountain. When they come back, Wang sees the class president, Cha Hun, and asks if she is all right. She tells him she is okay, but his clothes are ruined. He says he remembered something and asks Cha Hun if she has lost something. She says she does not think so. He then shows her identity card and says he is surprised to see her this confused, and she did not even realize that she had lost her identity card, so take it now. She thanked him and asked where he found it. He asks her instead what she was doing at the top of the volcano. He says she should have known that it was hazardous there. She says that there was no danger, she killed five mutated beasts, and then she thought about hiding at the top of the volcano mountain. But she did not find nor did she feel the energy of the mutated beasts there, so she went on the top of the volcano. And as she guesses, it was safe there. Then she says he is looking at her in such a way that he can't believe she has killed five mutated beasts. She says she utilized what she learned in the five years of martial arts examination and three years of mock papers. She also used the knowledge she had about herbal medicines to make poison and use it to kill five mutated beasts to death. He admires her and says the things she has done. He is sure that ordinary people can't do this, as expected of their smart class president. From now on, he will call her Ms. Lin, he adds more. He admits his mom was right, the prettier a lady, the more dangerous she is. They come inside the tent, where their third fellow, Yang Jian, tells them he is so unlucky and asks Wang if he thinks that the results still count. Wang said when the beast tide appeared, it should be less than an hour until the announcement to end the exam. So, its impact on the results should be manageable and most likely, the authorities would keep the results. He also asks them to remember the real purpose of actual combat assessment. Chauhan says she remembers any accidents or assessments. Wang says it's right, and he thinks the examinees who did not hunt at least five mutant beasts, yet, if they performed well during the beast tide, perhaps, they will still have a chance to pass the examination. Yang Jian says if it happens, then there will be a chance for him because when the beast tide occurred, he was fighting with his fifth mutated beast, and just as he was about to kill it, it ran away. However, he also saved an examinee after that and even got praised by the principal of the Balian Marshall House. Then, they hear an announcement that asks all examinees to please gather in the open area. When they all gathered there, the governor of the Donghai said he would announce the matters related to actual combat assessment. The examinees are surprised to see the governor come here in person. They tell him many miss the criteria to pass the examination just by a little and worry about how the assessment results will be calculated. They also tell him many of their classmates died in the beast's tide, and it's unfortunate. The governor stops them from creating a fuss and says the accident happened because of management's negligence, and says they will compensate the family of the examinees who died in the incident. However, they all have to remember one thing. The path of martial warriors is thousands of times more complex than this. They might have only seen the glamorous and powerful sides of military warriors, but they do not know how much effort they put into achieving those powers and things. Wang thinks the world of martial warriors is cruel and bloody. The governor says their performance during the Beast Tide will also be calculated in their total results, and those who performed well in the Beast Tide will be rewarded with extra points. Then, he announces the official ending of the actual combat assessment. After that, all examinees are asked to be prepared to go back. Yang Jian tells Yan Peng that he is fantastic, as he killed 13 mutated beasts, three of which were high-level mutated beasts, including four middle-level beasts. He then asks Wang to tell him his achievements, too, so that he can also praise him too. He says, honestly speaking, Master Wang must have killed mutated beasts more than those Yang Peng and says he thinks class presidents would also love to hear about his achievements. But Cha Hen says she did not say that. Wang says there is nothing that could be praiseable. He killed 29 beasts in total, of which 19 are high-level beasts, and 10 middle-level mutated beasts. He also says, later, he feels that no matter how much truth he says, there are always people who don't believe him. If he told them he also killed a star beast, they might explode right here in surprise. Jian laughs and thinks this Wang Tang of number one high school bragged to that point that he had killed 29 mutated beasts. Other students also start making fun of him and say he is a legend in his mind. Someone says it is a good joke. It is hard to kill 19 beasts, and he is saying that he killed 29 beasts. One of the fellows says he has long heard that Wang is an extreme martial disciple, and he almost wanted to have a duel with him. But, looking at how nonsensical he is, his actual ability must not be as strong as what they said about him. So now he has no interest in dueling with him anymore. 
the head of Wang's school. Zhu Wu says as they are going out, they represent the number one high school. So he hopes that Wang should think before doing or speaking anything to maintain the reputation of their school. Other fellows scold him that how can he say such words to Wang. He then says they are all students from Donghai number one. They must pay attention to the reputation of their school, which is why he is just reminding Wang Tang. Chahan says this is ridiculous, they chat casually, so Zhu Wu does not need to interfere. Yang Jian also stands up from his seat and says Chahan is right, they are talking among themselves, and whom they boast about had nothing to do with them. People like Zhu Wu can't stand that some people are more potent than him, so he uses every opportunity to create trouble for others. Zhu Wu laughs and says Miss Chahan misunderstood him. He is thinking just from the perspective of the school, and he does not need to be jealous of Wang Tang. Yang Peng then talks to himself and says in the past, he knew that Lin Chahan was a beautiful girl, but he did not have a chance to interact with her. Now, he has reason to approach her and make her his girlfriend. He again says Miss Chahan may have misunderstood him, and he has no malicious intentions. As for Wang Tang, he hopes that he can restrain himself. After all, words spoken in haste can cause problems. Chahan says this is disgusting. Yang Peng talks to Cha Han and introduces himself as an advanced stage martial disciple from Huying High School. He says that he is happy to be able to meet her and then asks if they can exchange WeChat to get to know each other. Wang comes and says he is sorry for disturbing their quality discussion. He says they are all getting arrogant. Peng feels his aura is powerful and is shocked at how he can have such a strong aura. He also says he heard that Peng wanted to have a duel with him and becomes furious that who gave him the confidence to say that. He also becomes angry about his wish to chat with Chahuan and says he does not even deserve their class president's we chat. He warns him not to overestimate his capabilities. Peng says to Zhu Wu as he has a strong sense of righteousness, so he must intervene to sort out the misunderstandings created between him and Wang. Wang laughs and says, but he does not want to sort it out by talking with him and hits Peng with his leg. Wang also turns back to another boy and says he is the one who was laughing very loudly some moments ago. But right now, he is trying to hide from him. Wang asks him to laugh loudly now in front of him. That guy wants to say sorry, but Wang hits him too. Then he thinks the problem is solved, so he asks the class president to return to her seat as they land. Yang Peng decides not to offend Wang in the future as he is so strong, which Peng can't afford to handle. After landing, while going back home, Wang says it seems that he can trust Director He, so when he reaches home, the first thing he will do is find out how the star bone works. He comes home and calls his mom but gets no response. He feels no one is at home, but then he sees Aunt Chen and asks about his mom. Aunt Chen tells Madam went out early in the morning. When Wang asks about the work for which she had to go out early in the morning, the aunt says something seems to have happened in the company. She is unsure about it, and Madam did not tell her the details. Wang says if something has happened in the company, then his dad should be in the company, mom should not worry too much. The aunt tells the young master that his dad has not yet returned from his last business trip. Wang decides to go to the company as he fears that something big must have happened. When he arrives, he tells the receptionist he is looking for Lai Ziyume. When the receptionist asks for Lai Ziyume, who is she? Wang gets angry that she does not even know about the name of the wife of the chairman of the company she works in. Then the director of the security department, Old Sun, comes and asks him what happened. When Wang asks Old Sun about his mom, he is informed that Madam should be in the meeting room, and Boss Bao from one of their competitive companies just came in with a bunch of people. He thinks their company's deputy general manager, Jia, plans to switch jobs. Wang says he remembers Bao Ziking. He was the one who overtook his dad's company after the downfall of the Wang family in his past life. He says he did not expect to meet this asshole so early in his life. He then moves towards the meeting room and says no problem. And today he is going to settle the account with this bastard for the old and new grudges once and for all. Old son asks him to wait for a minute and tells Bao Ziking has brought many people with him. So he has also called a few security guards here to put up an intense fight against his men. The security guards are ordered to come to the 8th floor. When Wang reaches with guards, they say although they are not that educated, they are all daring, hardworking, and loyal to the company, so Wang orders them. Wang appreciates them and asks them to follow him to the conference room. When they reach outside the room, he hears the voice of his mom, who says to the manager, Jia Garen, that her husband has always treated him so well, then, how can he collide with outsiders to seize the company's shares when he is in trouble? He also hears the voice of Garen, who asks Mrs. Wang that she does not have to make it sound so bad. However, it is in man's nature to strive for better. He also says Boss Bao has excellent talent and bold vision, 
His company also has great potential to reach new heights. So naturally, he wants to work with him. Old Sun tells Wang that Deputy Jia seemed to like a good person, but he did not expect him to be this hideous ad ungrateful person. Wang opens the door of the conference room when his mom sees him. She asks why he is there. Wang says he heard from Aunt Chen that something terrible happened in the company, so he came to take a look. A person asks him if this is a matter between adults, so he is suggested not to be a busybody. Wang asks his mother to take a seat first as she must be tired of standing. He then sees his cousin has also arrived here. She tells him that when Grandpa heard everything about her uncle's company, he got worried and asked her to drop by to see if she could help solve the crisis. Bao says he can see that young Master Wang is still the same. He still does not have any respect for elders like him. Another person says young master, they have an essential meeting here, so if he does not have anything important to discuss with Mrs. Wang, he can leave this meeting room first. But Wang ignores him, he says this bastard is too arrogant. He dared to forgive him and his words. He says Wang is going to regret this because he is going to make him and his parents live hell after this meeting. Wang says he is not going anywhere. A person says to Mrs. Wang it looks like her family's way of teaching etiquette is too bad. The little boss Wang does not know his manners and shows no respect to his elders at all. Boss Wang's ability must be limited since he's unable to teach his son correctly. And also, the little boss Wang is not young anymore. It is the time to educate him. If not, then he will cause trouble in the future. Bao Ziking says if Mr. Wang and Mrs. Wang are not capable of doing this, then they must leave young Master Wang to his hands so that he can teach him some etiquette. One of the loyal people of Wang's company, Old Guo, stops Bao Ziking and says. However, he is one of the reputed businessmen. Yet, he is trying to take over Xing Tang when President Wang is not around. Also, he has even insulted Mrs. Wang and the young master. He should be ashamed of himself for bullying the wife and children of his business rival when his rival is not around. Bao laughs and says he can see that old Guo is still a loyal dog of Wang's. Wang asks his mom not to worry as he is here to handle all of these. He then moves towards Bao and says what qualification he has to teach him. Bao is shocked to see that he has such a high level of power now, and asks him not to dare act arrogantly in front of him. He orders his man Zhu Lei to stop Wang and says as Wang does not know how high the sky is, so his grandfather of him should teach him that he should respect someone older than him. Wang's mother and cousin ask him to be careful as they cannot see him getting hurt. Wang says someone once told him that a person cannot always keep a low profile. When the time comes, he will have to show his natural strength. Otherwise, everyone will step on him or make him their stepping stone. He further says that in the past, he did not agree on this, but now, he thinks that man was right. He tells Bao that he knows the building they can see through the window belongs to Bao. Bao confirms it and says, undoubtedly, that the building he sees out of this window behind him is his company. He asks what he can do. Wang laughs and says he can do something big. He then uses his fire skills, breaks the mirror of his window, and sends some force toward his building, which causes harm to his structure. All members are shocked to know that he has become a martial warrior. He is not the same useless son that Wang Sheng Guo talks about, says someone. Wang says he dares Bao to play those lowly tricks again and next time it will not be his building, but instead, it will be his body. He further says he does not know whether Bao's body can withstand his sword. He then warns members who want to leave the company that whatever they are thinking, keep that to themselves and behave until his father returns. Once he returns, they can leave this company and follow whoever they want to follow, and nobody will stop them. The manager Jia says it's all over, now he can't get the shares promised by Bao Ziking, let alone he can't even consider continuing to work in Xing Tang company because Wang Tang has pushed him to a corner where he can only choose to leave this company. He also admits that he is so stupid that he chooses to offend Wang's family. Wang's mom and cousin become happy and say that's great, now they have little Tang, and they will not suffer any bullying from other companies. With a martial warrior protecting the Wang family, their Wang family will never fall, says his cousin. Then Wang asks his mother and cousin to leave this place and requests old son to please take care of the thing here and call someone to fix that window. He also asks his mom about his father and why he has not returned yet. The mother says that his dad went to the neighboring province to discuss a project. There was an issue with the interests of both sides, so he could not reach an agreement. However, the other party paid a considerable amount of money to a local gang and detained his father, and they're saying they will not release his father till he signs the contract with them. His cousin also says Grandpa has already sent people over there to help, but there have not been any results. Wang says Dad should have considered his life more than his business because his life is more important, and he must have known how much he is essential for them to also. 
The mother says, son, it's not that simple. She is sure that there is something wrong with the project. They want to use his father as a scapegoat to achieve their motive. Wang thinks it may be possible that the people who led the Wang family to its downfall in his previous life made their move early in this life. It is because of his involvement and the change that has occurred. He decides that he will have to look into this. He asks his mom to return home and investigate this situation in the neighboring province. He also asks his mom not to worry, as she has already seen her son's strength, and tells him it was not even 10% of his full strength. The cousin says she will accompany him there. She adds that it will be more convenient to contact the person sent by grandpa and have some information before taking action. When they reach there, the cousin tells them the negotiation meeting will be held in their clubhouse, so they will go now and meet the person sent by grandpa to get brief information on the present situation. They are informed that the other party is not ready to negotiate, no matter what terms they present, and promise to them. That party is not willing to let go of Mr. Wang, it seems that they have some ulterior motives. When a cousin asks about the other party's background, the person says they are involved in some grey industries and hold some power in Zhongcheng. They have also hired some people from the Iron Fist clan. They have more than 10 advanced stages and martial disciples. Wang thinks if he uproots their grey industries completely, there will be no problem. He asks both of them to wait for him here as he will go and deal with it by himself. After he is gone, that person tells his cousin that the young master barged in alone. He has also put his life in danger. The cousin asks him to wait and watch what happens next. Wang knocks the door and says the delivery man is here. The security guard says stop making fools, as no one delivers at night. Wang says big brother, it is something his boss ordered. It's a bit private, but he must want to listen to it probably. But the security guard asks to stop the bullshit and tells him what's that thing his boss ordered for delivery in the middle of the night. When Wang tells him, he opens the door and asks to wait and have a talk with him before he goes to meet his boss. He says he will lead the way for him, so follow him. He will take him to his boss and request not to tell him about what happened here. He then knocks on the boss's room door and says, Boss, it is he, Xiao Wu, and tells him there is a delivery for him. When boss asks what's in the delivery, he says it's the delivery he wanted expeditiously. When he opens the doors, Wang enters and attacks him, fight starts among them. His other men also gather there. He says it is interesting that this brat has some strength and asks who sent him here. The security guard says he is here for delivery, but the boss asks him to shut up and says he dared to let an unknown person in effortlessly. Wait, he will give him a lesson later. They are worried about who dared to trespass in the territory of the Iron Fist clan and ask the boss to make this bastard regret his choice of coming here. They also ask the boss to show this retard that no one can mess with the Iron Fist clan. Wang says he did not know that the boss of the Iron Fist clan was on the stage of the Extreme Martial Disciple. The boss laughs and says if he has no ability, how could he gain the position of the boss? But he calls Wang a real deal and says although he is still a kid, he has somewhat great ability and strength. He should have a bright future ahead, but now he chooses to come here to die, so the boss says he will fulfill his wish. When Wang asks if all of his men are here, the boss says there are more than enough people to chop him into dust. He then orders his people to attack him, but Wang dodged their attacks well. Instead, he became fierce on these people. The boss is astonished that this kid is a martial warrior, and says they should not have offended this almighty and dominant figure. He says they cannot beat this military warrior, so it is best to leave this place as soon as possible. In this situation, it will be best to consider life instead of reputation. So he orders his people to leave this place quickly and sneakily. When Wang sees they want to run, he says they must meet their death now. He attacks him so hard and asks who gave him the orders to abduct Wang Shenguo. The boss then tells him he also doesn't know. He knows that they are from capital Zia, and the person who asked him to abduct Wang Shenguo was a martial warrior and as he cannot afford to offend a military warrior, so he seized Wang Shenguo. He begs Wang to spare his life and says sir, he had no choice at that time except to follow his orders. Wang says he wants to spare his life, but his heart does not allow it. He then uses his fire skills to kill him. He remembers the rule of his life, which is dealing with the enemy without showing mercy. Other people see their boss dying in front of them like this and run to save their life. They say he is a devil, he will kill everyone present here. But Wang does not spare their lives, he says to let his family live without any hassle. He needs to show everyone that whoever dares to harm his family will only meet death or live the rest of their lives in despair. On the other side, Wang Shenguo hopes Lai Ziyumei and Little Tang are going well and says he does not think he ever offended these people or have any grievance against them, but they have abducted him, which he is unable to understand. 
He thinks perhaps they seized him because they want to destroy the entire Wang family. Then Wang arrives there and asks his dad if he is sitting here comfortably while mom is waiting for him for dinner. Wang Shenguo becomes happy to see his son, who breaks the ropes around his body. Wang says if he had not come, father might have been locked here for God knows how long. He then asks his father to return, as his precious mother has been worried sick for him, so making her wait any longer is not good. When they move, Wang feels his father can't walk properly, and he says father has not reached 50 yet, but his legs are already out of shape. Father says he has been tied up for too long, that is why his legs have gone numb, and otherwise, he is healthy enough to climb 10 floors without panting. While returning, father asks him to tell how he got in her and asks if he agreed to their rubbish demands. He fears they have asked him to sign his type of document, so he asks his son not to sign any document. They might lure him into their trap and defolcate the Wang family. Wang asks him not to worry and says his one and only handsome son is not a fool, and says he just talked pleasantly with the Iron Fist clan boss, and he realized that he made a mistake, so he told him to take father back to his city. But his father does not believe him and says he can't make him a fool. It is not possible that he talked pleasantly with them, and in return, they let him go. Wang says there is no reason that he would lie to his father and says if he has not convinced them, then how could he have come to take his father back? He thinks, fortunately, he cleaned this place before going to take father. He can't let dad know about such a bloodbath here. When they come outside, the cousin becomes happy that her uncle is okay and says she will take her leave first. She needs to inform her grandfather that her uncle is okay, so he stops worrying about him. Mr. Wang Shenguo thanks his niece for her concern and appreciates her working hard these days and asks her not to be concerned anymore and orders her to go home and have a good rest. Then, she asks little Tang to come to the old mansion when he has time. He should meet his other brother and sister and have a chit-chat with them, and he says it will be good for him and them if he and they have a good bond. Wang wishes her to have a safe trip. Father says this was an unexpected scene, as in the past, this girl Wang Yanan did not even bother to look at this brat. But what happened these days changed that girl's attitude that much toward him. While back at home, Aunt Chen tells Mrs. Chahan that she did not sleep the whole night, so please have some rest, or it might affect her health. If the master sees her like this, he will feel bad. She says she cannot sleep as there is no news of her husband and son. Soon she is informed that young Master Wang has come back along with his father. She becomes happy and hugs her husband, who apologizes for making her worry. Wang asks mom and dad to be aware of their surroundings and not to show their affection publicly. He says he is getting goosebumps. Then they get ready for dinner when a mother tells his father that his son is a martial warrior, and if he can't believe her, he can ask his con himself. Father asks him if everything his mom told him is true. Wang shows him a force and asks to take a look at him. Father asks if he has not practiced martial arts for long and how he became a military warrior this quickly. Wang says they won't believe him if he tells them that he met an older man who took him in as his disciple because he noticed that he is extremely talented in martial arts. Thus, he imparted some incredible skills to him, which is how he improved. His mother laughs and says this kid started talking nonsense again. He says there is only one explanation, that their son is a genius or gifted by gods. His father says he is a genius, he is his blood. But the mother says she should be the one who should take credit for giving birth to a genius son like him. During the dinner, they also tell father about what happened in the company. Mr. Wang Shenguo says that the bastard, Bao Ziking, dared to humiliate his wife and son and also tried to deflate Xing Tang when he was not present here. It seems like now the time has reached to settle the matters with him once and for all. He also becomes angry with Jia Giron and says the old fox tried to sell him down the ridiculous river. Mrs. Wang asks him to forget it and not to be too angry. She says their son has already taught them a lesson that they will never forget in their life. To be precise, it was a beneficial incident because they recognized the employees loyal to them during this incident. He then says she is right. This incident helped the companies clean up by kicking out the incompetent people and wringing in some fresh blood. He asks Wang by now his martial art examination score should be out, so he asks him to tell him about it. Wang says yes, it seems it will have been released by now, as he forgot about the martial art examination. Father says that they should go to his room and check it out. When they reach, Wang asks them, they seem to be so anxious. Father asks him to stop talking nonsense and orders him to enter his examination identity number and check his result. When he checks, the result card shows he got an A-plus grade. Father can't believe it and doubts he might have entered the wrong examination identity number. Wang says this is enough. He scored a little better, but they do not believe him. Then the father says son, when a horse who always comes late in horse suddenly comes first, then people should feel amazed. 
That is why he can't blame them for this kind of reaction. And he also says he scored so well that they could not believe their eyes. During their discussion, he receives a call from the class president. He asks about her combat result. She says she passed and got 80 points in the actual combat assessment. He congratulated her and said the class president had never sounded this excited before, and also told her to tell score in each subject. She tells him she got 138 points in Chinese, 143 in mathematics, 146 in English, and 148 in martial arts written. Then she asks him if he must have reached the highest point in actual combat assessment. He laughs and says he got full marks in the real combat assessment, plus 20 bonus points, as he is a genius. She calls him shameless and ends the phone call. After the call, his mother said it seemed like the caller was a female. He says that she is his deskmate, and they have a good relationship as friends. When mother wants to confirm she is a friend, he asks her not to go overboard and says she is thinking extra things. His father says it's alright, they understand, that he has a good relationship with her, and also asks him to invite her to this home whenever he has time. His mom will cook some delicious food for her. Then principal, you and Mr. Fan arrives at their home and tell the top scorer of the martial art exam is from their school, so they both are here to congratulate him. His mother is shocked to hear that the top scorer of the martial arts exam is their little tank. The principal asks him if he can tell them about the college he wants to join without hesitation. And also, as per his promise, he rewards him. He gives a pouch full of ice elements. The principal says he heard that he is an ice element martial warrior. So he especially asked someone to find 10 ice element yellow rank low class energy stones for him. Wang can use them for his cultivation. The jade bottle contains an ice spiritual dam. This will also help him in his cultivation. He also says this black stone is known as Dark Ice Stone once he accidentally got hold of it. It can be used to forge weapons. It's a coincidence that it perfectly suits his ice element. Wang says it is a rare treasure, but it's a pity that this stone is too small. And the principal says the reward is delivered, so they will no longer disturb them and take leave. Wang says thanks to the principal and teacher and says he's safe on their way back. After some time, a few more people also reach his home and Wang says they don't usually have so many people at home. They also come to offer him to join their school. They say this time, they are here for him. Take a look at these terms and conditions. Wang asks everyone to first head inside the house and then talk about these things. Wang asks if there will be any issue while enrolling in a martial arts school if he also joins an academy. The person tells him nope, and there will be no issue even if he joins the military academy. He also says many strong martial arts warriors enrolled in their school are from different military academies. They ask in which martial arts school Mr. Wang wants to enroll, and Wang takes time to think about it. Then, he chooses Jixian Martial Hall. The person from his selected school becomes happy and asks others to accept the defeat. He shows them the contract his school offered to Wang. They are shocked to see that this is an SSS class contract. Those who have got this contract so far have already reached the warlord rank. A lady from another school says they cannot afford such a contract, and says they can only sit and watch and be regretful for not being able to recruit a genius. Then Wang is given a band and told that after wearing this, he can connect to the Jixian Martial School, and will be able to purchase resources, and the school will wire him $1 billion in installments, as the contract says. Wang is also given the facility of buying a house in the family area of the Martial Arts School after which Jixian Military Hall will guarantee the safety of his family members. Wang thinks if he moves there, he can rest assured about the safety of his parents. He then asks the teacher if he knows any academy he can apply for. The teacher says the first few significant academies are similar, but the military academies are stricter. However, there is one good thing. If he performs well enough and builds up his military skills, then the military academies are the fastest way to gain power. The teacher also says that in the future, there are chances that they will be in charge of an army with great passion. In foreign lands especially, they are building up a significant army force, and there is a particular need to inject new cadets. When Wang hears about foreign lands, he says he will think about it. The teacher also tells him after applying for the academy, there will still be a month left before he leaves for his academy. So he will look for a squad of warriors in the martial arts school. They will help him in his training and cultivation. Wang says they must also teach some techniques. They might become his teammates in the adventure of foreign lands. On the other side, he is informed by a red-haired man that the Iron Fist clan is eradicated, and the surviving gang members have fled away. The secretary who advises says that he went to see it, and he is sure that everyone was shot dead in one move. He also says that those high-ranking advanced martial warriors were no exception. The boss of the Iron Fist clan was nowhere to be seen, 
but there was a scorched black mark on the scene. That red-haired person says those marks were of fire elemental martial warrior. He then orders his secretary to head back to the capital, Zia, and says he is tired of dealing with these things and suggests asking someone else to deal with this mess. When the secretary asks if he will act, that person says he is tired, so let's head back to capital Zia. The next day, when Wang sees a banner which is for the welcome of the champion of the Donghai Martial Arts Examination to join the Jixing Martial Arts Academy. When he reaches the academy, the students say they cannot expect their academy to have this kind of hidden big shot. They say they also redouble their training efforts and cannot slack off. Wang says that's great, just in time for him to pick up their bubbles. When he checks his status window, he observes after the perception point exceeds 100, it will be promoted to the spiritual realm. He feels his understanding of the skills seems to be strengthened. Spiritual attributes are about to break through. He wants them to break through 100 points quickly. Wang sees a girl requesting a security guard to let her come in as she wants to talk Wang and also says she knows him well. But the security guard says he cannot trust her simply because she said she knows him. So many people are looking for him these days, so he cannot trust her. He says she looks too sneaky, so he cannot let her inside. Wang comes forward and sees she is Chuxia. The security guard apologizes and says he did not expect them to know each other. Wang says it's okay, that is not his fault. He then leaves the academy with Chuxia and asks how she came outside alone. She says that recently, she felt that the air around her had become thick, making her uncomfortable again, so she wanted to find him. She also tells him her sister does not know that she has come to meet him. Wang gives her his cell phone and asks her to talk to her sister first and inform her. Otherwise, she and her mother would be worried. When she calls, Cha Hen says that she went without informing her family, so she does not know how much her family members are worried. She orders her to come back quickly. Chuxia says she finally came out once. She does not want to go back so early. Wang then talks to Cha Hen and says class monitor since her sister does not want to go back. She can stay with him first so that they can rest assured. Then Wang asks Chuxia to relax. The matter is settled now and asks her to go to his house for dinner first. Then he will take her to a fun place in the evening. While returning home, she asks him what he is holding in his hands. He says he has an acquaintance there. He likes to drink super strong wine. He just added some seasoning to this wine. Wang comes to the mental hospital and asks the patient that he is here again and brings some special wine for him. He says that he has something for both of them in return. He gives Wang a familiar USB, on which Wang thinks he must not be a wholesaler. While to Chuxia, he provides a map and says he puts everything of her interest there, so she must find it. Then, he asks them to leave now as he gave them everything, so they should not stay to delay his rest any longer. When they come out, Wang says he is speechless as he chases people away like that, and this broken thing cannot be a map, so he asks her to throw it away. But when she says this seems to be a map, he asks her to show him, too. Later, while walking, he says he will talk to her about that map after researching it. Suddenly, they see Cha Han coming towards them. Wang says the class monitor is looking so stunning now. She scolds Chuxia and says he gut is terrible now, and she dares to run away from home. Chuxia says she did not run away from home, she just went for a walk. Then Chahan says to Wang that it is already too late in the evening, and he still took her out to walk around and feared that something would happen to her. Wang says she should go out more and not stay at home all the time, it is best for her. It also relaxes Chahan that nothing terrible can happen to her as long as she is with him. Chuxia says to Cha Han that she will scare him away by being so fierce like this. Cha Han says if he is scared away, then he's scared away. It's none of her business. Then she asks her to tell honestly where did she go that evening. On coming back to his home, Wang says the spiritual attributes have also reached the spiritual realm. It should not be possible to fetch things from the air. He thinks he can try something light first. When he tries, he feels this is the derivative product of spiritual power after the spirit realm. Although he cannot see this power, he can follow his heart. He says no matter what a spiritual energy is, it cannot be a means of attack. He tries to use it and is happy to see that it works. He knows this is just a water flow. If he uses this force to compress the original point and shoot it out, he will become so powerful. He says it's good that he is not tired so he can take advantage of the night to try out the limit of this power. He comes to the forest and brings his sword to try the flying sword technique. He observes this sword has floated, and it can fly. He considered it as a flying sword. He becomes happy over this experiment. The next day, when he comes to the school, he feels his head is hurting because he spent all his energy last night. His class teacher tells him that a few critical recruiting teachers from several universities personally came to talk with him so that he will lead him inside. 
While going, the teacher tells Wang that he did not expect his class actually to get a martial arts champion. He did not even dare to think about it before. When they reach, the teacher apologizes to the guests for keeping them all waiting. He then introduces Wang Tang, the champion of the martial arts examination. Wang says seeing all the respected teachers to come personally, he is flattered. Then, the teachers introduce themselves as admission teacher Kin from Hunghai Military School, admission teacher surnamed Lai from Donghai University, and teacher Zhu from Xiadu Military Academy. He becomes happy that all of these recruiters suddenly came here for him. The teacher tells him he must have heard of the name of their number one university. He can enjoy the best resources and connections here. His principal told her to do whatever it takes to bring him in. The principal would love to see him. The other teacher says his Jinlin University is almost the same as the number one university, and the principal is also an 11 Star Wars general level warrior. The third teacher says the resources of his Donghai University will not be worse than any other university, and his principal is also an 11 Star Wars general. If not because something happened today, he would probably come to him in person. Wang says this time, three Star Wars warriors came out, so it is so pressureful. Another teacher tells him the military academy is a place where he can show his talents. He is also informed that if he does better in school, he will be granted military rank and enter another world to fight with soldiers. Moreover, according to the superior's decision, as long as he enters the Hunghai military school, he will be awarded the rank of sergeant immediately. The teacher of Xiadu Military Academy says they also have the military rank and an additional advantage. Admiral Lei Yao, an outstanding alumnus of the school, is in charge of the Red Tiger, a Leguian in another world. As long as Wang is exceptional, he will be guaranteed a place, says another teacher. Wang says to Teacher Kin and Teacher Zhu that he heard that military academies have very high restrictions on the freedom of students. They say that the military school will be stricter, but the rules have been used to restrain the weak. And Wang is strong enough, so he can still break even it is the rules of the military school. He says if it is like that, he wants to apply for the Hunghai military school. Later, when Cha Han asks about the university he applied for, he also tells him about the Hunghai military school. She thinks he attended the number one university, but he says the military school suits him. He then asked her to which school she was applying for. She says she wanted to apply to Donghai University but is still worried, so her second choice was to apply to Donghai Institute of Technology. Wang says she won't regret it afterward. Initially, with her grades, if she takes the general exam, she will be accepted to Donghai University readily. She says there is nothing to regret, but he is clear about her family's situation. So Wang asks her not to worry, they can continue to be in Donghai City. She asks him to come with her on a walk. After the hike, when Wang says it is finally time to graduate, she says it's getting late, so she is going back. So, both of them go back to their homes. Three days later, when he is in his academy, Cha Han calls Wang and tells him she was admitted to Donghai University, majoring in material arts. Wang congratulated her and said the class monitor worked so hard. After the call ended, he decided to try a step further and become stronger. Then, he meets the governor, who introduces him to the Zhanhu martial arts team. He says this is his hand-picked team. All the team members are three Star Wars soldier-level warriors, so he does not have to worry about their safety when he goes to another world with them. He is introduced to Lin Jan and is asked to follow him from now on. When Wang shakes hands with him, Lin Jan feels he is very sturdy that he can't even move his at all. Wang says hello, Captain Lin, please take care of him from now on. Lin says he has lived up to his reputation of championing the martial arts examination. Then, he asks others to give him an introduction, too. The other martial warriors were introduced as Yang Fei, an earth-type martial artist, Yan Jinming, a fire martial artist, Yan Jinyu, a wood-type martial artist, and Liu Yan, a fire martial artist. Liu Yan asks Wang to follow her in the future, she will cover for him. Moreover, there will also be extra benefits. Later, Wang Teng is asked to get ready to go to another world. He feels excited about going there, but he says this time, the weapon change is costly and the money given by the Polestar Martial Arts Hall has been spent. He says martial artists burn cash, and Master Liu's things are not cheap. He does not know how Master Liu used the hidden weapons made of star bones and cold black stones. If the meteor cone can be made, he can use his mental power to control it. It's not too cool to divide a hidden weapon into nine. He asks Sari to keep everyone waiting. The captain says it's okay, everyone is here, so let's go. Wang feels excited to see the new things. His fellow thinks he will be even more shocked when he reaches another world. Liu asks him to come forward. 
When they arrive, the captain says almost everyone will experience intense discomfort when they walk through the cracks in the space for the first time. But he has nothing to do. Liu says she remembers the way he vomited. It seems that this guy is a bit unusual. Wang also sees a lot of bubbles there and thinks they might have come out from the cracks. When he picks them up, he feels these are space attributes. Finally, with his mental power, he stopped crawling around like a sand sculpture when he did not have to pick up bubbles. He says this is a big profit. The other world seems very friendly to him. He sees the fourth tower of the alien civilization, located in the city's center, and this tower powers the entire city. He says the product of a foreign culture is so peculiar. He sees a strange girl, and when he inquires about her, his fellow tells him that she is a rabbit girl from the orc clan. He says there are many races here, not only the orcs but also the dwarves, giants, fishermen, etc. Liu says she will arrive at the Polster Martial Arts branch later, but if Wang wants, then her sister can show him some knowledge. Wang says since the Earth and the other world coexist peacefully, then he thinks that why can they enter the different world, but the outsiders cannot enter the land. She tells him that outsiders cannot pass through the cracks in space. There was once a strong man from another world who wanted to pass through forcibly but was seriously injured by the backlash and almost lost his life. Then they come to the other world branch of their Polster Martial Arts Academy. She tells him he can pick up quests and trim here, and loot can also be sold directly. Different people ask Lin Jan if he brought a newcomer, and they are surprised to see that such a young guy can be a martial artist. Someone says this is the champion of Donghai's martial arts exam this year, and the museum owner personally asked him to take it. He says this year's military winner is fantastic and a true warrior. Captain Lin asks him not to listen to them. This group of people is just like this, there is no excellent malice, and asks him to go with him, he will take him to learn common sense in the other world. He then brings him to Uncle Hai, tells him he is getting a new guy, and requests him to show the new guy the inheritance stone. Wang is asked to put his hand on the inheritance stone. When he puts his hand, he feels something different. He is told that he has learned the language of another world through this way. Then, the captain asks him to rest for a while. After that, he will be taken out of the town to hunt. At night, they reach their target destination, the Dark Mist Forest. Captain tells them many dangerous star beasts, are here, so do not let their guards down. Everyone is asked to change the equipment and wear infrared glasses. Wang says the atmosphere here is very eerie. Suddenly, they see the feces of the gale wolf, whose shape, color, and smell are fresh, which means that the wolf just left recently. The captain asks them to be careful. Gale wolves moving in packs will be in trouble if they meet them. Liu says at least seven of eight gale wolves are hunting around here. Another fellow tells Wang that gale wolves are wind attribute star east that are known for their speed and ability to cooperate within their packs. It is also announced that as it is Wang's first time, so they should not take the risk. They get attacked by a snake, which they soon kill. Captain says it's okay. It was only a poisonous snake, a star beast. As they move forward, they see a pack of gale wolves. The captain asks them to prepare for the battle. Liu asks to kill them as soon as possible. Soon, they kill them, Lai says it's a bit of a piece. Then she says she forgot about the newbie, so she returns to him. She asks him if he is alright, and he says star beasts in the alternate dimension are no joke. Luckily, he has his cheat code. Otherwise, he almost died. She appreciates him and says his strength and battle instinct is commendable. He smiles and asks not to flatter him. Captain asks them to wrap up the things quickly, as other star beasts will flock over soon after smelling the scent of blood. Wang sees the gale wolves dropped wind attribute fundamental energy. He says it's a big harvest. He also observes his squad members fall at the entire point. It's a pity there is no metal attribute fundamental energy. He has focused on Lin Jan's metal attribute fundamental energy for some time. But it looks like he did not even use his energy to kill the wolves, he is insane. The status window tells him he has gained gale steps, on which he is surprised that the gale wolves even dropped a battle skill. Liu says it's a pity that these gale wolves do not have any star cores, so they can only bring their fangs and hide back to sell them. At least, it's worth something. Then Captain Lin tells them that he has decided that they will head to the Wind Valley tomorrow morning after resting tonight. When Liu says if they are going to hunt the unicorn from last time, it is too early. The captain says he originally wanted to let Wang Teng get used to the environment for a few more days before heading there. But after he witnessed his performance, he thought they could push it forward. Liu asks him to wait and says the unicorn is one of the strongest three-star beasts. It is very clever, and fear they may even fail even if they hunt it with their full power, and may lose their lives if they are not careful. Wang listens to their discussion very carefully, 
and then the captain moves towards him and says he has not told him anything about the Dark Mist Forest. He believes Wang must have a lot of questions. Then he talks about the forest and says the Dark Mist Forest is categorized into the outer, center, and inner zones. There is also the more profound Death Forbidden Zone and Mysterious Forbidden Zone. He can find Star Beast at 1 minus 3 stars in the outer area, Star Beast at the level of 4 minus 6 stars in the center zone, and Star Beast at 7 minus 9 lead in the inner room. The terrain and environment in the Death Forbidden Zone are challenging. There are Star Beasts of the territorial level inside. Their power is equivalent to general rank martial artists and from the mysterious Forbidden Zone. Nobody has ever returned alive from there. He also says that now they are in the outer zone. They found the unicorn three days ago but retreated because they ran out of supplies. The unicorn is talented and may have a star bone. They will be rich if they can hunt it down. Wang says he does not mind if they want to look for the unicorn, but he cannot help much against the three star beast. Captain says they will head towards the Wind Valley tomorrow if he agrees. The next day, the captain asks Wang to take care of the high level one star earth boar. Wang thinks the captain is testing him. They see a pig, Wang starts following it. Liu asks the captain if he is sure that Wang can take care of the earth boar by himself. Captain says it should not be a problem. Then he asks her to bet on how long Wang will take to finish it off. When she asks what's the bet, he says about 10 or Jinium. So, she says she is guessing it will take 5 minutes to finish. Another fellow says although Wang Tang excels in speed, she is not sure about his strength and power, so she will guess 10 minutes, while the other one guesses about 12 minutes. In the end, Captain says he will be done within 1 minute and asks others to prepare to give him their Orginium. On the other side, Wang says these are all evil teammates as they are gambling on him. He feels this pig has tusks as hard as metal because he cannot penetrate its defense. He also observes its attack pattern is very uniform. Its only specialty is its thick skin. If that is the case, he decides to use a different trick. Soon, the captain tells others that he took less than a minute, so he demands their Orginium. Liu says that the brat used an underhanded trick. He is so shameless. As he uses that particular skill, she asks him why he did not use his fundamental energy to attack him. Wang says he has to save energy while he can. He is the only one-star soldier ranking martial artist, so his fundamental energy is limited. He thought this skill was very efficient and used it more often. He even gave it the name Thousand Years of Death. She asks him not to use it in front of them. The captain orders them to loot its tusks and hide them, they will retreat soon. One member tells the captain he feels a star core. When they see it, they become because it is star core. The captain says he is speechless and says Wang is so lucky, then asks him to keep this star core and not to show it to anyone. They have to hurry to the Wind Valley. Wang is also happy as he got two star guts from killing three star beasts. His luck is crazy. While going back, when the captain says someone was here earlier, Liu also admits and tells others to leave traces behind. It seems like they came late. They decide that if earlier people have not left and they meet them, they might have to fight them. The captain says since they are here, they should at least take a look around. The War Tiger squad is not afraid of anyone. Soon, the captain asks them to prepare for battle as he expects the unicorns to be far from here. Suddenly, Liu is attacked by something. Wang helps her out from that attack and says if she does not have a battle suit and force shield, she will be seriously injured by this thing. When she says thanks to him, he says now is not the time for such formality. After some time, they see a unicorn, which seems like a rabbit to Wang. Ju says they were ambushed by this beast previously. They see this unicorn is hurt, blood is on the left side of its body. They think maybe the previous group left it. The captain says it is so vicious when it is injured, so take advantage of its injury to kill it in order to attack and fight together. But soon, they realize that although it's injured, it's still going. It wants to break out. They ask Wang Teng not to let it run away. Finally, the captain announces it's almost dead. Everyone fought harder, but they hear its roar again as it stands up again. Liu says this beast wants to kill them. Unicorns attack them all so hard that Wang doubts if some are still alive. He rushes towards his captain and asks if he is alright. The captain says it's okay, it's just a little hurt. He also inquires about others who come forward and tell them they are fine. He then asks them to go and see if that beast is dead. When they come close to it, they say it seems vast and credit the whole team for such hard work. The captain asks Lao Yang if he will give it to him to open it up to see if there are any star bones. Wang laughs and says brother Yang is about to become a butcher in the team. Liu asks everyone to be patient and wait for what emerges. After a while, Yang says he touched the star's core. The captain says excellent, it's Samsung star core. The star core of Samsung star beast sold for considerable money. 
They also get the star bones, Wang says the captain, after all, has an elite warrior team, so he should not be excited about having just a star bone. The captain says the kid does not have backache while standing and talking. They have only encountered this star bone for so many years. But Wang looks like he does not like to have it. Liu also says it seems like he does not know the price of these star bones. Wang says he knows the price and says he did well in the martial arts exam. And the leaders of the education bureau gave him a piece of it as a reward, so that's it. Yang pulls out the leg of the unicorn and gives it to the captain, who becomes happy to see the star bone. Wang says the captain's saliva is drooling and asks the captain how much can this star bone sell for. Captain tells them they will send it to the auction house, they will convey the exact price. It may even be sold for billions. Wang says it's so valuable then and thinks it seems that the bureau was massive at the time. Then they see someone who says these guys are brave as they dare to grab what he likes. Wang says this guy is probably the one who hurt the unicorn and says this is to take advantage of the fishermen. The captain says that this guy speaks the common language of the Xingwu continent and is most likely to be a local aboriginal. So, it looks like a fight is inevitable. He then says to that man that his excellency is too overbearing and that he could not kill the unicorn by himself, so he gave opportunity to others, but now he is aiming for it. That person says what he fancies naturally belongs to him. He dares to attack them with his skill of wind blade. Wang realizes it's a wind star beast again. The captain asks Liu Yang to shoot this beast down for him, and as Wang Tang is good at archery, so he must hurry up. But Liu says she can't shoot it. The captain says this guy is so confident that they cannot attack. That guy laughs and says those who are sensible will hand over things, otherwise, they will die today without a burial. Captain says, just relying on this mere wind blade, it seems he wants to do anything else with them. He challenges him if he has any guts, then he should come down and fight one on one, hide and hide on it. But he says they all are looking for death, so he uses his Vulcan cannon to attack them again. Wang says this Vulcan cannon is expensive and powerful, and this bastard carries one with him when he goes out, it's ruthless. His attacks are so intense that Wang also feels dizzy. When he wakes up, he says it hurts so much, he also worries about the captain and others as he does not know what happened to them. That guy comes in front of him and says it seems that Wang is relying on luck to save his life, but his teammates are probably dead. He says Wang, if he tells him what they got from the unicorn, then he might consider sparing his life. Wang asks if he killed all of his teammates just for revenge, but the guy does not respond to it. Instead, he advises Wang to pay attention to current affairs, or he will make him die miserably. Wang calls him an old man who is so wordy. He becomes furious on hearing an older man's word for himself and says now this kid deserves death only. But Wang uses his hidden skills of snowing, spirituality, and others and says this guy is still too young to kill him. Soon, he defeats him alone. After that, he comes towards his fellows and says everyone was seriously injured and unconscious, especially Yang Fei, as his legs were blown away. He then sits near his fellows and thinks ordinary people can't use the Vulcan. He suspects the guy may be a character, but it does not matter now as he has killed him. He finds a space ring and says, on the contrary, it and its resources are more valuable. That means this guy is wealthy. He also got mid-level wind talent and skills from him. Even at the price listed on the martial arts intranet, Xuanji's advanced exercises and combat skills cost hundreds of millions. The status window congratulates him on getting wind spirit gong and combat skill, blue wind. He says that guy gave equipment and practice, what a great guy, and admits sure enough, killing is the right way to get rich. Then the captain wakes up, says he is feeling better, and inquires about others. Wang says everyone is still in a coma. The captain says it's all his fault, and if he had not chosen to confront that guy head on, this would not have happened. But Wang says even if they hand things over to that person, he may not let them go. Then, the captain asks him how he saved them. Wang says that guy took it lightly when he thought they were killed and was killed by his sneak attack. Captain says that when everyone wakes up, they should go back. The next day, after coming back to his hometown, Wang walks through the streets and says that the beauty of a warrior is a considerable risk. So, if he wants to get to the top, he has to get stronger. Without further ado, turning the recovered materials into new weapons is the correct solution, so he brings his material to the Master Lu branch. When he enters the shop, just for a moment, he feels he came to the wrong shop because he made an appointment to build weapons a few days ago, but he sees no one there. Then he hears the shopkeeper's voice, who asks him to come in directly as he is working on iron. Soon, the shopkeeper comes and says sorry as he had him wait for a while. 
Then, he introduced himself as Lu Zhishen. Wang says his name is unique. Zhishen says it's the Zisheng from Self-Reliance. This is the name his master made for him. He also tells Wan that he has already looked through the blueprint of the item he wants to be forged and asks if he brought the materials here. Wang says yes, he got it, and gives him a ring. The shopkeeper becomes curious about this boy's background when he sees the spiritual ring. He informs Wang that as this is so good material, and with these two distinct materials, he can at least forge six-star level meteor all. Wang impresses from him that it could develop a six-star level weapon. Jishin says that is right. These two distinct things are the determinant materials. Wang also gives him some more things and asks if there are any usable materials here, he can also use them. Jishin says one of the yellow-shaped ball-like materials is known as Xuanzang Yeowen. Wang asks for the details of this material, then Jishin says it is an extraordinary metal, really very heavy, and is a rare weapon forging material for mighty warriors. Wang holds it in his hand and says it's not heavy, he feels the weight is just right. Jishin asks him to insert his force, and when Wang does this, he realizes this is so heavy. So Jishin tells him that theoretically, the more power the holder has, the heavier it becomes. The weight can be increased all the time. He asks Wang if he is willing to sell this Xuanzang Yeijin. Wang refuses and says although he can't sell this thing to him, he wants to forge it into a weapon. For this, he needs Jishin's help. Jishin says there is no problem. Xuanzang Yeijin is best forged into heavy weapons, like a battle axe, painting function, or something else in the same category. Wang asks him to make it into a brick then. He says no, no, building bricks is simply an insult to Xuanzang Yeijin, and by doing this, he will receive a significant loss. Wang says it's okay if it's impossible. He will look for other forgers to forge it for him then. Jishin agrees, says he will help develop it, and asks him to return three days later. Wang says thanks to him and says he will see him in three days. Wang then comes out of the shop and says the auction is about to start. He hopes the unicorn star bone will sell for a reasonable price. On the other side, Chairman Lai tells his son that he struggled to get the invitation letter to bring him to see the world. He will see a lot of strong people later. He also asks his son not to take Wang Tang to heart, as that little bastard is nothing. His son says next year, he will be admitted to a critical university, making him die very ugly. When he sees Wang Tang also in the auction house, he confirms with his dad that it is that little bastard Wang. His father says it's true that enemies are bound to meet on a narrow road and asks his son to learn to be calm a bit. He is curious about how this kid obtained a letter of invitation. He imagines it could be possible that Wang's family gave the invitation to him. The son says he is sorry. Father, he always gets angry whenever he sees him. Mr. Zai also came there to participate in the auction and meet Chairman Lai. Lai tells him that he brought his son to look around. He says Mr. Zai must have fancied a particular auction item and come here to bid. Mr. Zai says precisely that he wants to forge new weapons, so he comes to look at the materials. He asks him that his son should also take the college entrance examination based on his age, and participate in martial arts exams. Chairman Lai says his son is already a high-level martial artist, but it is a pity that he was forced to give up the test by a student's humble means when participating in the martial arts exam this year, so he can only repeat it next year. Mr. Zai tells him that it is good that his son's talent is excellent, but what if the student is so vicious that he kicks his son out of the assessment? Then Lai says this kind of person became the champion of the martial arts exam, which is a bit ridiculous. It was Wang Teng, who also came to the auction today. He did not even say hello when he saw him earlier. Even if he had become a martial artist, he should not have been this arrogant. Then Zai laughs and says many rookies are like this, they swell as soon as they become warriors. They do not know how high the sky is. Mr. Lai says what Mr. Zai said is correct, someone like Wan Tang will kick the iron plate sooner or later. He won't even know when he dies. Then they go to the auction house, while Wang is thinking that the auction is about to start. But why Lin Jan and the others arrive yet? A girl calls his name. Wang says this vice is just like the voice of Zhu Jai's evil sister. He turns back and asks sister Zhu Hui why she is here. She becomes angry with him and says he did not reply to her texts. He thought of climbing heaven when he became the champion of the martial arts exam. Wang says he has been busy recently. He has just come back. He had shut down his phone and did not see her messages. Then a boy comes towards them and says since Wang is his friend, Zhu Hui, he is also his friend. He tells him his name is Zai Jilong. He calls Wang his little brother and asks him if he can come with them. Otherwise, it will be wrong if he collides with the big shot in the venue. Wang says it's okay if sister Zhu Hui calls him a brat. 
but he becomes furious when that unknown man says to him a little brother, Wang says how he dares to call him a little brother. Wang says no need, he is waiting for his friends and will come with them. Sai Zhilong says this kid needs a beating. Initially, he wanted to be good to him to gain Zhu Hui's favorable impression. Zhilong sees his uncle, Zai, who says he can't believe it's him, and then he asks about his friends. Zhilong says they are all his classmates from Jiangnan University, but this person is the champion of the Donghai Martial Arts exam, Wang Tang. He further states that this person does not seem to be an average student. He then shouts at Wang and says Mr. Zai is a three stars level martial warrior. Why doesn't he hurriedly bow his head and give him a greeting? People are astonished that a three-star level military warrior has also arrived here. Mr. Zai says this much is nothing. So many great people are present here, he is just the lowest level of existence. He then asks Wang that he heard that Wang and Lai Rongcheng have an old grudge. During the martial arts exam, he retaliated against him and forced him to drop the exam. Zhilong says he thought this kid was arrogant but did not expect his heart to be this black. Su Hui says Wang Tang is not that kind of person. But Jilong tells her that knowing someone by this face does not mean she knows their heart, so she should also not be sure that he is not that kind of person. Jilong asks Wang Teng to tell him did he cause Lai Rongcheng to drop the exam and also challenges him that if he is a man, then he should admit it. Wang, who is busy eating, asks did Lai Rongcheng say that. Mr. Zai says it does not matter who said it. Although he is still young, he is already this vicious. And if he becomes a mighty warrior in the future, it will be a giant tumor. Wang says even if he is fierce, then they should be worried because this has nothing to do anything with them. He further says he does not even know him. He just came calling his name out of nowhere and said many things he did not know. Jilong becomes angry at his words and says he does not know how to respect elders, and whatever his uncle says is just for Wang's good. But he just scolded him, so he does not deserve to be the champion in the martial arts exam. Wang says he won't know that these guys came to curse him even without differentiating between true and false, but now they even question the authority of the martial arts exam. Jilong says so what if he questioned it? The number one student in the college entrance exam must at least have an all-round development of morality, intelligence, and physique, but he does not seem to have any such quality. Then Zhu Hui interferes, stops Jilong, and says he has spoken too much. Jilong says Wang insulted his uncle that much, but still, she is telling him that he is going too far. Zhu Hui still protects this kid. His uncle's eye stops him and says his classmate is a friend of Wang, so he fears that they are just wrong, so he advises him to stay away from her. Then he asks Wang to conduct himself properly, as he is so quick to speak his tongue he must be regretful when he goes out. Then, Captain Lin arrives and says he understands Mr. Zai is threatening his squad members. He then asks Wang that he is just hiding here to eat while they are looking for him everywhere. Wang says they are too late, so he really could not wait, which is why he sat down to eat something to pass the time. Mr. Zai is surprised to see that Wang is a member of the Tiger Squad now. The captain of the Tiger Squad asks Mr. Zai why he is threatening his squad member just now. But Mr. Zai calls it a joke and says Wang is merely a high school graduate, so it is not possible that he would become a member of the Tiger Squad. Then Captain Lin tells him he does not need to believe him, but Wang has been arranged to stay in his team by the owner of the Jixing Martial Arts Academy. Mr. Zai says he just reminded him to live well as a good person and not suffer future losses. This kid got into the owner's eyes, this is troublesome, he thinks deeply. Su Hui asks Wang to tell his fellows how did this old guy troubled him. So speak up, and they will vent their anger for him. Wang says, alas, during the martial arts exam, it was Rong Cheng who led people to look for trouble. But he was unsuccessful, and was being chased out by him. Now, he is back to take a bite. Captain Lin says the older man dares to come over and teach people even if he is not clear enough about things. He says Zai has become old and confused. Then Mr. Zai shouts at his people because they lied to him. Then he says to Lin Jan that today's matter is his fault, and he admits this. Lin Jan asks him to apologize to Wang Tang and says, by the way, leave some compensation for mental damage and other stuff too. Zai says this is the auction house. If he does not say sorry to Wang and give things to him, they cannot do anything to him. Lin Jan thinks they cannot do anything to him now, but he can't be sure when they go out. So Zai says alright, these guys are so ruthless and then says there are 30 origin stones here. He then gives his compensation to Wang. Wang feels it's too few and surprises a 3-star level warrior is so poor. Lin Jan tells Zai that these are too few, so add 50 more. Zai says they should go to look for it by themselves. He then goes back with his people. Lin Jan says it's almost time, so they should also go inside 
and tells the head of the Bond auction house has arranged a room for them. Wang says to Sister Zhu that he will go up with his teammates first. She says they are so lucky that an exclusive room is arranged for them, and she is envious. When the auction starts, people offer vast amounts of money for their desired items. Lin Jan says there are so many rich people in the world, he also wants to become rich like them. Wang says he knows the prices of the previous auctions made him feel that they were not spending money, but paper, it's too excessive. The auction host says many people will be interested in the following items. She presents the thing that the client from a different world has obtained. The seventh auction item counting from the last is the three-star wind star beast, the star bone of the unicorn's leg. People say the three-star bone of the unicorn, the star beast of the wind system, is an absolute good thing, and it must be photographed. Someone says no one else will snatch it from him. This star bone is his only. Without further ado, the host announces the price of this star bone starts at 500 million and tells each time the bid should not be less than 10 million. Ten asks to start bidding now. People offer 550 million, 600 million, and many more. Wang and Lai Jan are watching the show from their room and say these people are crazy. Jan says it's time for them to make a fortune. Liu and the other fellows also become excited to know they will be rich soon. Wang says this is the world of riches. Finally, the deal is done on 2 billion. It is announced that the star bone belongs to the VIPs in private room number 8. When the last item of the auction is about to be presented, the evil followers of the Genli religion enter the hall and ask to start the rune formation quickly and order people to get out of the building. Lin Jan tells his group that it's the evil followers of Genli and asks them to get out their weapons and rush out, too. They say they are always ready for a fight and come out to the auction hall. The contest starts, and Jan asks everyone to disperse and observe. Although the strength of Genli and his followers is good, their force is insufficient. The leader of Genli's gang says that he will know by trying whether the point is enough. Liu fights very well and asks Wang to cover her. Their leader says this woman is a big trouble and must get rid of her first. Wang observes he is a three-star level martial warrior and says he knows he is just one level apart from him. He did not expect the difference in strength to be this much. He comes in front of Genli's group leader who asks Wang who gave him the courage to come, as he is a mere two-star warrior. He then moves towards Liu and says she is just playing with fire. Wang becomes furious and says this bastard's opponent is he, then why he turns towards Liu. When Wang turns toward that bastard, he says it seems that a boy wants to be a hero, but he will send him to hell. Wang says Tiger does not show its strength. That bastard moves forward to attack him, Wang uses a hidden skill. That enemy suddenly starts coughing and says Wang uses poison. The poison gas in the body cannot be dispelled. He feels so humiliated and cannot bear it, and he falls. Wang says the poisonous body technique of Demon Lotus is so overbearing. Liu says she did not think Wang would be so cruel. Wang says he is a kind and good person. Usually, he cannot bear to kill a chicken, so he is given the nickname. Liu says she cannot believe that this little boy can even use poison. He says he is honorable, and this is merely used to kill his enemy. He then tells her he will help the captain and the others so she can rest here for a while. Wang says it was worth the danger just now is gone, and the intermediate water talent and mysterious swordsmanship are so good. He also says it's cool to feel stronger and says there are still so many attributes on the ground. After picking them up, he can go to the captain and the others. When he comes back towards captain, he asks them to leave now as the issue is finally solved. Captain Jan says he does not know if these thugs still have reinforcements. Jan is suddenly informed that Wu has fallen. He asks everyone to dash, as even the six-star master Wu has dropped, they are not their opponents. As expected of Jan, the reinforcement has arrived. The fight starts again. Zhu Hui, who has also come there, says her body does not obey. She feels she is going to die. But Wang comes to rescue her. She thinks about why Wang is so strong even more potent than the seniors. Wang asks her to go and find her seniors, but she says no, she cannot leave him here. An opponent tries to attack Wang from behind but is killed by her. Wang says he knew that she would cover him. They finish the combat so quickly. He asks Zhu Hui to hurry up, as he has something to do with his teammates so he won't be with her anymore. She then asks him to take her there and leaves. The auction house suffered a significant loss this time. Fortunately, their star homes have been sold, and the money has arrived. Captain Jan says the madman of the Genli followers failed because, fortunately, the Tiger Gang has a 7-star soldier-level martial artist on their side, so they did not cause a bigger disaster today. Liu says she will transfer the money for selling the star bones to the captain in a while, and asks not to buy useless things indiscriminately, shopping without overdoing it. 
Captain asks Wang to go home quickly and asks what is there to do with the evildoers, they are all lunatics. Wang says alright, Captain and moves back. The attribute bubbles of a soldier level powerhouse are too rare, so he decides to go back and see. He says sorry, Captain, he did not mean to lie to him. He changes his disguise so no one can recognize him and reaches for the powerhouse. But this place is already sealed off, it looks like he won't be able to get in. He sees people coughing, and when he turns back to see them, one person asks him from which branch he belongs. But Wang says he does not understand the rules to be asking him this nonsense. He feels he ran into the evil follower. He says he is being reckless. He has just started being a follower and still does not understand many rules. Then he tells that man they must do their things, as both are dressed like this, which is too conspicuous. That man calls him an old bird, no wonder he is so thoughtful. Then that man asks his brother if he will go first and see him in the abandoned warehouse area in the southern suburbs at 8pm. While Wang says it seems that he accidentally found out the place in time of the gathering of the evil followers. But he cannot leave this place like this. He plans to go to the other side and see if he can approach the trading house for bubbles. He sees a giant bubble, which must be left by the strong. His status window tells him that he has obtained an advanced swordsmanship talent, top level swordsmanship. He says with advanced swordsmanship talent, all kinds of swordsmanship and combat skills can be mastered quickly, let alone this 13 swordsmanship. He also says missing these few bubbles means losing over a billion, money cannot buy this opportunity. As for the followers, leaving a piece of word for the city guards should be considered as he does good deeds now. Security guards come there, suspect someone is here. They say there seems to be something written here. When they read it, they learn that evil followers gather at 8 o'clock in the abandoned warehouse area in the southern suburbs. They say whether it is true or false, they must report it first, as they cannot control it. Wang comes back to the shop of Jishan, who tells him his meteor hammer, and the brick he wants, is ready. He also describes the meteor hammer has reached the level of a 6-star advanced weapon. There are also 5-star low-level standards. Wang says he is delighted with these two. Great Master Lu is superb. Jishin says his Master Lu's signboard is not to fool people. He then says it's better to attend tonight's meeting secretly. He can try these two new weapons now. The security team says unexpectedly, there are evil followers gathered here. Thankfully, they have sent more people to ambush all around. This is an excellent merit with so many bad followers in one go. The person who reported the news to them is good. They say it looks like they have to do a great job. Wang comes and says it's enough that these guys know he allowed them to do meritorious deeds, so now they should not waste time. He will find something for them to do. He hears the voice of a fire gun. The security guards come into action to prevent the enemy from lurking. Wang says this is the operation in the gangster film. He sees it with his own eyes. The criminals come out of the building and say nobody is chasing after them as they ignore them. But they do not know Wang is following them from behind. He throws a brick at them. The more security guards come there, the more one tells the other that someone influential person is hiding in the dark and helping them. The other says it is possible. This lord is a good person who hides his merit and fame. Wang, who is also at that spot, feels someone is talking about them. He says whatever they are talking about. He should cultivate his spirit well and look at tomorrow's second-rate boundary. Later, he says the time that his space talent accumulates enough will never come but that outsiders cannot pass through the cracks. But the people of the Earth Star are waiting in earnest. A large number of them are also arranged outside the trial. He comes to a shop where many people are sitting. A person says this is a rookie of the Battle Tiger squad and becomes curious about why he is the only one here from that squad. He also tells the Battle Tiger squad that they lost a member last time and should rest and undergo reorganization for a while. He thinks this silly boy wants to go on an adventure alone. Wang says to the shopkeeper that he wants to rent a heavy armored car, who tells him it's dangerous to go alone, and confirms he is sure to buy a car. Wang says thanks for his concern and says he has already thought about it. Then the shopkeeper says that's fine. He gives him a key and says he must pay the price if the car is damaged. He gets into the car and comes into the nearby town. While driving, in this nearby town, various warriors are mixed, so he should take advantage of the night to go around and hurry into the forest. When he reaches the forest, he takes his luggage, exits the car, and moves into the woods. The thieves also hide in the forest. When they see him, they ask where this kid is going and observe his speed so fast. He disappeared in a blink of an eye. The boss orders his people to find that kid separately. Wang says these people should have been eyeing him when he drove past the town. The boss calls them to look for him immediately and sends him a message once they find him. 
Wang says the rays of light of these people's original force should be all-star warrior level warriors. He says he would like to see what they can do to try to rob him. The boss waits for his people for a long time and worries his people have gone, even though the boy has not been found yet. Then suddenly, Wang comes behind him and asks if he is looking for him. When the boss turns back, he becomes shocked to be there at once. Wang does not give a time to attack. Instead, he shoots first, and soon the boss falls. Wang says this person is most vital, and the remembering two are weaker than him, so he plans to kill them with this method. So they hid there and waited for others. Soon, they arrive, and when they see their boss in such a bad condition, they rush towards him and ask what happened to the boss. But Wang attacks them in the same method used for the boss and kills them. He used his meteor cone. After that, he says the meteor cone fused with the shadow star bone, making him turn into a slayer of the night. He says, then, it's time for crazy leveling. A month later, when he is in the forest, he says all the combat skills have been cultivated to perfection, and the original force methods are also close to perfection. He has reached the three-star complete attribute so quickly, and now he is unafraid of encountering a four-star warrior. He sees there is a situation. People run quickly, he thinks someone could have run into a star beast. They are following in human footsteps. Wang says as the language of the outsiders is common, it seems that this is a team of other world warriors. Suddenly, one falls and asks the other to save him. Wang, who is observing the situation from the far side, says he cannot see it. He uses his vision skill and learns that there is a black ray of light of the original force. Those people talk to each other and say there must be a dark species around them. They are worried about how it could be here and say there is no way to run away or escape from this darkness, but they may survive if they fight to the death. A lady says this is important, they need at least one to stay and report the case back. Wang, who is looking at them from the far side, says listening to them makes him feel that thing is terrifying even so to affect them so much and that dark light is the dark species. He just lost his mind for a minute, and the monster disappeared. He says it can be a ghost, depending on the, the situation, but as it was a zombie, that monster would be best. He also says this is not how to do it, they must evacuate. Then he sees that the thing is running, which shows something is wrong. Suddenly, a monster appears at his back and attacks him badly. Wang falls in front of those people. They ask him who he is. He says it does not matter who is here now and asks them to get rid of that black thing first. But one person says to a lady named Liuya that this guy is unreliable. If it were not for the dark species to force him out, who knows what he would do to them. But Liuya says they have no choice but to deal with the dark species first. Wang asks her to watch out as the monster is above her. He asks them to fight with him together. Then the fight starts. Wang says the monster was so close if the flying knife did not block it. Those claws of the beast would be a problem for him. Soon, he realizes this is too hard to deal with. It cannot be looked down upon. After some time, that thing disappeared. It ran so fast that they could not find where it went. Suddenly, they see someone calling Liuya's name for help. Other fellows stop her from going there. But she says he is her fellow, Mulong. He is injured and bleeding as well, and she must go to save him. But a person asks her not to go, as something is wrong. Wang also notices that there is something wrong because he observes that there is the same dark light as the dark species. When Liu Yu moves forward to check it out, other fellows ask her to keep her guard up. When she reaches close to Mu Long, she asks if he is alright and can move. She also asks him not to worry as she will save him. When that person stands up, everyone is shocked to see that he is not Mulong but the monster. The monster says he is waiting for her and attacks her. Luoya strikes back and says while he is sick, she will kill him now. Soon, he was dead. Then Wang asks to watch out again as she is being attacked from behind. The dark species seems to have appeared in the form of his teammates. Wang asks a man to save Luoya, who is just coughing now, she says she cannot believe she can't die yet. He tackled the other monsters alone. Liuya says stabbing that thing's heart did not seem to work, the head had to be smashed. Wang says now she should relax, this thing is no longer her teammate. Wang sees the black and sunny attribute bubbles, and he says if he picks it up, he may become a dark species. He then picks the bubbles. The status window tells him he has obtained the dark talent and force. He thinks about dark skill and talent and says it differs from all the previous details. There is a sense of water-cooled darkness. And it also dropped 8 points of spiritual attributes. So he hopes there is anything special about this dark species. He says people with a mental health condition will also drop their spiritual attributes, and the spirit of dark species is also abnormal, so it is not the same as mental illness. Wang asks Luoya what she knows about this dark species. She asks why she would tell him that. 
Then she agrees and says, Firstly, they should dispose of the corpse and leave as soon as possible so as not to have long nights and dreams. She says they know very little about the dark species and may know some inside stories after returning to the city and reporting to the military. Wans asks if it would be her army on the mainland of Xingwu or his military on Earth. She says both parties are to be notified. She also says a decree was promulgated more than 20 years ago. Once a dark species appears, the military departments of both parties must be notified immediately. Wang says it means the military hates to pay the attention to the dark species. Luoya said that it has existed before. In recent years, dark species have appeared more and more frequently, and the military department has only made it public. She then asked to walk as they would talk while walking. She also says even if they do not report to the military today, they will come to them soon. When they reach the North Yuncheng District, Earth Star Military Department, they are told it is a military restricted zone, so they must get out of the car and prove their identity. Wang comes out and says he is a martial art warrior from Jixing Martial Arts Academy, and he has something important to report. He is asked to show his identity to cooperate with the inspection. After inspection, he is asked why he arrived. He says he has encountered the dark species, so then he is asked to come inside. When he reaches the manager's room, he is asked about the dark species in the dark fog forest. He says he met the dark species in the dark mist forest with another team of alien warriors. He then gives something to the manager and says this was taken from the dark species, they can take it for testing. The manager says, well done, the corpse of the dark species will affect other living things if it is not handled in time. He then tells Wang Teng that he heard from Lao Fu that there is a genius in the East China Sea this year who won the martial arts examination. He thinks it must be him. Wang says Lao Fu is his host, then asks the manager that is he also belongs to the Donghai. On which the manager says yes, he and Fu are old acquaintances. He also says Fu is very optimistic about Wang. Wang says really, General Shen is too respectable. When he inquires about the dark species, the manager thinks he should know about the expansion of the martial arts examination this year. When Wang says yes, he knows about it, then the manager says just as he thinks, they are dealing with the dark species and sacrificed a lot of warriors for this, so they expanded their recruitment. Wang asks why they are going through all this effort when they know that dealing with the dark species is a matter of a foreign country. The manager says he can tell him that Earth and the planets are not safe and they will suffer from it sooner or later if they do not take the necessary measures. Wang says that is it. The reason the army was stationed in a foreign country, and the cracks were heavily guarded, is apparent now. The manager also says that is why the warrior's identity is detached. The more privileges they enjoy, the greater the responsibilities they assume. He then asks Wang not to worry, as the martial arts students do not have to go to the front line for the actual combat and says some choose clerical work in the rear. When Wang asks him about the frontline battlefield, he tells him that he will see it when he goes to college. This time, he met only the lowest level dark species, the higher level dark species were white existences. Then Wang asks the last question where do the dark species come from? The manager says they come from the abyss. A few days later, when Wang comes back to his hometown, he sells all the material of the star beast used in the foreign country, and becomes very happy as he makes a fortune. He decides to go home and see his parents in a while. While going there, he hears from people that his residential area is on fire. He runs so fast. People are shocked to see that such a young man is a warrior running so fast. A few ladies are also talking about how they heard the real estate upstart Wang Fugui's family is gone. It is said that he killed someone before, and his sons became warriors and returned to take revenge. He asks his aunt Zio if she means something happened to Wang Fugui's family. Firstly, she becomes happy to see he is back, and then, saying that is right, she sneaks at it, and the man tells others not to interfere with his wife. Wang says he thought it was his house, so he was surprised. Aunt Zio asks if he should go home and have a look, as his house is close to Wang Fugui's home, and it would be wrong if the fire started and affected the fish in the pond. He says goodbye until next time and moves to his home, after he is gone. The aunt says this younger Tang is polite and has become a warrior now. The Wang family does not have to worry about him in the future. On the other side, the whole house of Wang Fugui is burnt while the opponents pick his daughter up. Many people are standing there watching the whole incident. Wang Tang's mother is also there. She says she did not expect that Wang Fugui's family and his wife would be buried in the sea of fire, and his daughter Dudu is still so young, but it seems that she is going to be killed too. She moves ahead, says she is just a child, and requests to let her go. She asks Dudu not to be afraid, her aunt is here, but the culprit asks Mrs. Wang to step aside and not interfere in their matter. 
She says no matter how great the hatred is, it should not involve a child, and the child is worthless. That culprit says his parents were also innocent, but when they died tragically at the hands of Wang Fugui's family, no one spoke up for them. Mrs. Wang says, indeed, she can see his pain, and she should not judge him from the moral high ground, but Dudu has nothing to do with it all. That person asks her to get out of his way, he won't kill her. She says she feels sorry for what happened to his parents, but she cannot watch him kill the child. That person becomes furious and says it is useless to talk too much, so now he will kill her, too. Then Wang Tang arrives at the spot and stops that person to attack his mom. He tells his mom not to worry, it is alright now as he has returned. Then he says to that person that he does not care about his hatred, but if he dares to do something to his mother, he will break his arms, so he must take it as a lesson. But the culprit says if it were not for the lack of killing intent in his shot just now, his sword would have killed him. Wang says his strength is far inferior to him, so he has to accept what happened here. He also says he will give him a chance to come to attack him for revenge after his practice. Then that person tells his name as Yan King and says he will take revenge on him and then goes away. Mrs. Wang also advises him not to go against his heart. She asks his son what if this person cannot get over his knot and seeks revenge on him in the future. He says not to worry, this will not happen in the future, so she should relax now. He thinks mom should not take part in the warrior's revenge, but it is okay, he can protect her. Soon the police arrive at the incident place, Wang says he has met Captain Chai already, now what a coincidence, they are meeting again. Captain Chai asks him not to mention it, they are just doing routine work, just make a note, and he says this kid has turned into a combat warrior, so he cannot mess with him. Then he inquires about Daodu, and Mrs. Wang tells him that this kid has lost her parents. She worries about her and requests the captain to allow Dudu to stay with her. He will enable her and ask her to take care of the kid. Then he says if there is nothing else, they will leave first. While going towards their home, Wang asks his mom what she is going to do next. She says that she heard Dudu's mother say before that those relatives of Wang Fugui are not good people, so Dudu cannot be handed over to them. Wang says they let Dudu stay at their house, and those people who dare to make trouble will make them regret it. His mother says she knows he is impressive now, but he still has to ensure his safety when he goes out. Wang says, by the way, mom, as he said before, he will move to the Wuj family area. They will see the house when dad returns to avoid re-encounter today's situation. After a few days, they shifted their luggage to the new house. Mr. Wang says the son's page is promising, and he spent 300 million to buy a new home at once and says Wang has more cash in his hands than his father. Wang says not to worry as he will be more respectful to him and mom in the future. Mrs. Wang asks Daodu what happened. She says auntie, she wants to go home and want to find her parents. Mrs. Wang asks her to stay at auntie's house this month and tells her that mom and dad have gone far away. When she says it seems like her parents do not want their Daodu now, Mrs. Wang tells her that her parents are the people who love her the most in the world. They may wish for her. She asks them why they did not come to pick her up. They are dead. Mrs. Wang hugs her and says not to worry. Then she tells her husband they can adopt Daodu, as her relatives are too unreliable. And she fears that Daodu will be wronged. The husband says it is an excellent idea, they can have a younger daughter. And asks to let her live here first, then they will see further. Three days later, a party is held regarding Wang's promotion. The grandfather says thanks to the guests for attending his grandson Wang Tang's promotion party and salute them all. Someone from the guests says Mr. Wang's arrogance remains the same as before. While many people say congratulations to the Wang family for having a martial arts champion and say tea is fantastic. Suddenly, a man arrives and says the banquet has just started, so he came at the right time. Wang's eldest son, Wang Sheng Hong, asks that person who he is. He says he is a gift giver, but Wang knows him and says he is Zhang Yi. He comes towards the hosts and brings a mirror from his pocket. He opens it and holds it in his fist. An old aged man appears in the reflection light of the mirror, who says it's been a long time since he has not seen Wang Jiaxing. Wang's grandfather is shocked to see that this person Ren Jianping is alive and says he was dead. Then how he is live now. Ren tells him that he shot him at that time, but it is a pity that he is so lucky. He should give him more shots. Wang's grandfather says it is a pity that he, a bastard, has been allowed to live for so many years. Ren says now they can seek revenge on him and says yes, it used to be an opportunity. But now the Ren family is more vital than his Wang family, so he is back for revenge. He then tells him the truth that he kidnapped his son, Wang last time. He says he has not much time, and he will take his royal family to be buried with him before he dies. Then, he asks Zhang Yi to send a significant gift to them. 
When Zhang moves, Wang's grandfather calls guards to come on and stop him. He throws the big tower-like gift towards them and asks them to pick it. Wang moves forward, but his grandfather and parents ask him to stop. Zhang says he is just waiting for him to make a move. Wang uses his skills to stop that gift from bursting and causing any damage. Zhang is shocked to see the result and says his investigation data told that this kid has only a one-star warrior rank. But now, how is it possible that he can handle it all alone? Wang says he is a soldier warrior with a great strength. He is still too young if he wants to rely on this mirror to overwhelm him. Zhang feels he has become so much heavier as Wang has placed that gift over his arms, and he is standing on the estate. Everyone there is surprised to see that Wang Teng has gained so much power and has become more robust. Wang says everyone should watch a performance and then eat and drink. Wang's cousin says about him that her cousin is so handsome. He is even more attractive than her classmates. At the same time, another asks her not to compare him to her classmates, as their cousin is more handsome than anyone else. Other family members are also praising him. Wang's uncle says his brother has a good son and says the younger Tang is so promising that both of them can enjoy happiness in the future. Someone says this brat is so skinny. The grandfather advises his son to take care of Wang Tang. He says further with this child, it may not be impossible for the Wang family to prosper and reach an unprecedented ancient house. But the most important thing right now is Ren Jianping's threat, and he says he is afraid of the dying people because they are too crazy. Wang, who is listening to their discussion carefully, asks his grandfather not to worry and says he thought the other party did not dare to come to Donghai City blatantly. He says he was admitted to Colonel Wang Heijun, and he has a little background, and he does not blame him. Everything is up to him now. The grandfather says it's okay now. His grandson is very promising and helps grandpa solve the problems. He also says it is a blessing for the Wang family to have a kid like him. Wang asks his grandpa what is going on between him and Ren Jianping. So his grandpa tells him that decades ago, he and Ren Jianping used to be friends in the same village, and they came out together to make a difference. Since ancient times, heroes have been saddened by beauty passes, and they both fall in love with Wang's grandma. But his grandma chooses him instead of Ren. So Ren Jianping turned against him, even hating him to the bone. Later, he wanted to kill him and accidentally leaked the news ahead of time that he would be the first to strike first. But Grandpa says he did not expect him to die. Wang laughs and says Grandpa's glorious deeds make him admire. Zhang, who is tied with ropes, requests Wang to let him go. Wang says he is not dead yet. Instead, Wang has just stunned him. Wang asks him to answer his questions, and then he can let him go. When Zhang hears this, he can't believe that Wang is going to set him free for real. Wang says now Zhang has only two options, either answer his questions or he will be killed then. Zhang tells him to ask the questions. Then Wang asks him to tell the background of Ren Jianping. Zhang says he was just ordinary, but his grandson Ren Qingkang is a martial arts genius. Thunder Martial Arts gave Ren Qingkang an SS level contract, and the chief gymnast accepted him as the second son of Lai Chuan. Now that he is a six-star soldier level warrior, the Ren family has also ascended to heaven. Everyone is shocked to know that the direct disciple of the chief master of Thunder Martial Arts or a six-star soldier level warrior. Grandpa says taking out any of these two identities would be a big deal. No wonder Ren Jianping noted that there was a unicorn in their family, so it turned out to be Ren Kingkang. Wang says he signed an SS level contract, and he won't be weaker than that guy. Grandpa says it is good if he has the heart to sell, but before the end of his strength, he should fight hard first and not go head to head with Ren Kingkang. He then asks Wang what he is going to do with Zhang. Zhang says that they said before if he answered the questions, they would let him go. Wang asks him not to worry, as he will do what he said, and he will let him go now. So he allows him to go. When Zhang is going, the grandpa says there will be endless troubles if weeds are cut, but the roots are not removed. Wang asks him not to worry, it is his death time to walk out of Dong Dong. After sitting in the plane, Zhang says that this kid does not know how to let the tiger return to the mountain. When he returns to Xiadu, he will add fuel to Ren Qingkang and send more influential people to wipe out the Wang family. After coming back to his hometown, one day, Wang thinks it seems that Zhang is dead, using spiritual power to control the silver needle to attach to him and then piercing his heart, yes, it is invisible. He decides to go home as he has to pack his things because the college will start tomorrow. The following day, when he comes to Colonel Wang Heijun College, 
He says it is impressive and has many students. He is also excited to start his college life. Zhen Sheng Jing came over to take a look at the new students. All the new students are gathered at the information desk, where they are informed that the martial arts professional dormitory is divided into four areas. A, B, C, and D District D is generally occupied by first-year students, with a total of 300 rooms. The rooms are all quadruple rooms, which can accommodate 12 O people. Only those who have reached the first star trooper level can stay in area C, where single rooms are available, and 300 rooms can accommodate 300 people. Two star and three star fighters can stay in district B, where they have better facilities than in district D, and district C there are 200 rooms in area B. The last one, district A, has the best accommodation environment, where the top 100 warriors in the school live. It is being told about the people who will stay in area A, who will be elders, and their strengths are above three stars. So all the students are advised to work hard to be placed in the top areas. It is also informed that the entire dormitory area is mixed with men and women, and every room is occupied by classmates of the same sex, just living quarters together. The martial arts professional strength speaks, as long as the students are strong enough, they can even challenge the top 100 students, and as long as they can win, they can also replace the toppers. After that brief description, Zin Cheng says that she announced the dormitory allocation of every student. Liu Zulian, number 23, Liu Renjia, number 20, and Hu Liangping, number 18, are allocated in the district. Di Wang says it seems that these guys are pretty good among the first year students. He then asks Zin Cheng to help him to find out about his dormitory. When she checks it, Wang is given the room number one in District C. She says she did not expect Wang Tang to be so powerful. Another student comes to Wang and tells him to rely on him as he is so awesome. He says Wang is a freshman who will live in the number one room in District C, which has never been done before. Wang thinks it is an exaggeration. Xin Sheng tells him that room number one in each district has a special meaning, representing the group's most vital members. As a freshman, Wang has reached this position right after entering school, and he will become the target of public criticism. She also tells him that someone will trouble him 80% of the time, so he needs to be very careful. Wang says at worst, he has competition and lets other students understand that he is qualified to love in room number one, and he does not worry about it because he is already a three-star warrior. Other students say this guy is so arrogant. They are all asked to move on to the dormitory assignment, and it is said that, by the way, do not be late, everyone who will arrive tomorrow late will be excluded. The next day, the students try to reach early in the ground. They are asked to be silent as some higher authorities are coming. The students say those are coming, which seems to be horrible. Then, a man introduces himself as Peng Yuan Chan, the chief dean of the Martial Arts Academy of Huang High School. He says military enumeration is where military places are cultivated, and student acts will be held late. The bounden duty of a soldier is to obey orders, and when someone enters their Yellow Navy Academy, he must abide by these rules. Students who are late outside run 20 laps around the playground first. Wang calls him the devil as he is announcing brutal punishments. Another student also asks who can run 20 laps. Peng Yuan also says students can enjoy the privileges of the military academy, but not enjoy a comfortable life. He calls them the future warriors and says the responsibility on their shoulders is heavy. He further says one day, they will understand that when the world needs warriors, they will be at the front because family is behind them. It is the burden bearer who bears the burden of all living beings. Wang says that's right, after knowing about Sheju, he can understand this passage better, but is it necessary to speak so provocatively? In the end, he says one more thing. This year, one of the students among them is a freshman honored. They may have heard that the Donghai Wukou champion passed the martial arts examination with the strength of a warrior, was recruited by this school, and was awarded the rank of Solider level. Many students say a first-year student can't have such an award because a first-year student who has not made any military achievements should be awarded a title. Chief Dean Peng Yuan says he knows students are constantly dissatisfied, but Wan Tang is exceptional. He also says all the students are given an opportunity they can challenge Wang Tang, and whoever wins can take the rank. Some of the students say that it is a good thing that they can learn more items from the champion Wang Tang. But Wang says awarding a title is a good thing. But it seems this old fox is still cheating on him. Then Chief Dean Peng asks Wang to please come to the rostrum so that he can confer the title on him today. He again asks him not to be shy and to go on the stage. When the students see Wang Tang, they give mixed remarks. Some say he is so handsome, others say he is just a boy and does not seem so superficial and many others get jealous. When Wang comes to the stage, Peng Yuan asks him why he is so confused. 
Wang refuses and says he is not confused at all. Then Peng Yuan says that student Wang it has been many years since the last time a freshman was awarded a title. Now he is glad to have another student like this time. But Wang's journey has just begun, and the future is still very long. So, he hopes he can add more honors to his body when he graduates. Peng says he hopes that one day, he can see him put on a gown. Other students say Chief had never told about this gown before, and they doubt that what kind of ability does Wang Teng have to make the dean places such high hopes on him. They do not accept it. Wang thinks this old fox is playing tricks on him again. This is to let the seniors and sister beat and hone him. He then asks Dean to wait a minute and says he can't be manipulated so easily. The Dean tells him if he has any questions, he can say it. Wang says he just said that as long as they are at the same level, anyone can challenge him. Then, can he also challenge them and seize their military ranks? The Dean says the military positions are obtained through military merit. He cannot just take it from someone. He also thinks this kid has a sharp brain and is digging a hole for him. Wang says that is not fair, if he wins and gets nothing in return, this is inappropriate. When Dean asks him what he wants now, Wang says it is simple, if anyone wants to challenge him, just come up with an equivalent reward. They can also give him credits, as he heard credits are instrumental in school. The Dean says yes, but there will be a limit, he won't be given more than 100 credits. The Dean smiles and thinks this kid is very confident, his behavior is so similar to someone back then. Then he said that is enough for today. The students will choose the branch tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. They can also check the school's official website, and students are advised not to be late tomorrow. While going back, a few students ask Wang to go to the playground with them and prepare for the sorting ceremony. Wang asks him why they are calling him. They say that he is a celebrity now and ask him to hug them. They say their roommates also admire him very much, and it is good that he is so energetic. A student asks him if he reads the instructions of the five colleges. Wang says no, he has not read yet. Then he tells him about them. War College focuses on cultivating students' combat ability, which will be the main combat force on the battlefield in the future. It has the highest mortality rate, so it is necessary to be prepared to die. Forging College teaches forging technology to create weapons suitable for warriors. At the same time, Alchemy College cultivates talented alchemists, and provides warriors with elixirs for cultivation and healing. Similarly, Rune College, an all-encompassing, in-depth, profound study of runes, is preferred. The Commander College is responsible for training tactical command personnel. Wang says it sounds like these five colleges have their corresponding advantages. The next day, everyone reaches the ceremony on time. They seem to remember what Dean taught them yesterday. Firstly, the dean of the war college, Tong Hu, talks to the students and says he only has one thing to say, if they enter their war college, they will be the strongest. The dean of the commander college, Su Jing, says what Tong Hu says is wrong because his academy is only strong in individual strength. They have never won any group combat mock test against the commander college. Su Jing agrees that warriors need their strength but their brains must keep up with their physical abilities. There was a wise man in ancient times who could fight single-handedly with thousands of troops, but the person who knew how to use the brain was the strong one. When Tong Hu says she is just playing tricks on students, they both are asked to stop arguing in front of the first-year students. Then, the dean of the forging college, Wu Changsong, addresses the students and says he wants to tell them that forging is an art of stone and requires talent. He welcomes students and asks them to enroll in their college. Some students say he is so handsome. After that, Chui Heng, the dean of the alchemy, talks to the students. He says that, according to him, alchemy is much more complex than the rough art of forging. If students feel that their talents are high enough, they may wish to come to their college for the test, and after passing the test, they can enter alchemy college. He also says that Alchemy Academy does not have that much compared to the other colleges. But one thing that they have is pills. It does not matter if they want one and waste two. Then, the dean of the Rune College, Sidu Jun, introduced herself and said students interested in runes could come to their college. Wang says these five deans look so unreliable. But whatever, he has to go to these colleges. Then, he moves forward to pick up the college. Everyone is shocked to see that he is picking up the forms of every college. It seems he will join all the colleges. After picking up the states, he feels the old fox is getting so angry. As he tries to join all the colleges, Peng Yuan asks him what he thinks he is. He also says that Wang does not even have that much energy, and he is biting more than he can chew. This is self-destructive and irresponsible of him. He further says that he will take this as a joke, and asks Wang not to do that again, and asks him to think carefully now and choose again. Wang says that he wants to learn more than one course, what the dean said makes sense, 
but he thinks he can handle some mode. Peng Yuan says it is good if he wants to gain extra knowledge, then he will recommend joining War College. He will also be given an audit pass. He can attend other classes, but this should not affect his martial arts training. Wang says thanks to the dean and says he will follow his advice. Then, students are asked to continue the registration and not try to do anything stupid. A few days later, when Wang is walking through the ground, someone calls his name and asks him to stop. Wang says he does not know this person, but he introduces himself as Wai Hua, a sophomore in college, a one-star warrior. He tells Wang that he heard that he was admitted to this college with the strength of a one-star warrior. He was a little curious, so he came to test his strength. Wang says it means Wai Hua wants to challenge him. Wai Hua says yeah, it is true. Then Wang says he hopes that he has 100 credits too. But Wai Hua says he wants to have a spar with him. Wang asks him not to waste his time if he does not have credits. Then Wai Hua says he will prepare credits to fight with him tomorrow at noon in the playground ring. Wang then accepts his challenge. While returning, Wai Hua says this freshman is not easy to foo. He initially thought that he could test his strength without officially challenging him. And if he wins, then he can snatch away rank from Wang. And if he wins, he will get 100 credits which is 1 million outsides. While Wang thinks that Wai Hua is trying to fool him, tomorrow, he has to pretend to barely win so that people will come to challenge him in a steady stream. The next day, many students come to see their fight. They say Wang is newborn. He cannot defeat Wai Hua because Wai Hua has been doing military exercises for a year. Although Wang is also a warrior, his instincts and combat skills may not be as good as Wai Hua's. When Wang reaches, Wai Hua says he is late. Then Wang tells him that first-year students are compelled to attend military training, and Wai Hua can talk to his instructor if he has any problems. Wai Hua asks him not to talk any more nonsense and says since they are here, they should start now. He also tells the audience that if he loses, he will give Wang Tang 100 credits, and if he wins, then Wang will hand over his rank to him. Students laugh at his announcement and say this guy preempted an excellent opportunity to grab the rank. A girl says that as this is a martial arts fight, they should allow the martial arts club to be the referee. So, the referees are announced to be junior sister Yang Lin and senior brother Chen Su. It is also clear that they already have military ranks, so they cannot come here to grab the classes. Some students think they might have come here to recruit Wang Teng to join the martial arts club. Wai Hua says having the two seniors as this matches referee is his honor. Wang also says he has no objection. Wai Hua thinks he will use a short sword and asks Wang about his weapon. Wang pulls out a brick from his pocket and says he will use it as a weapon. Yang Lin becomes surprised to see this weapon and confirms from him that he is sure to use this bright thing as a weapon. The students say he is just showing off. While Wai Hua says he wants to use this brick as his weapon, it means he is looking down on him too much. He says he will teach Wang a lesson for looking down on others. Then the fight starts. Sun, the audience observes this Wang Tang is quite strong. But why Hua would not want to lose? That would be a massive shame to him. Wang says he must end this fight as soon as possible. Why Hua is also shocked as he had not expected him to be so strong. Wang finally throws a brick on his face. He falls. Yang Lin announces the end of the match. No one believes that he won just using a brick, which is shameless. Wang holds a brick in his hand and says he gives respect to every genius, which he defeats by giving them horns on the head. Students say he has such a filthy heart. He then asks senior sister Yang Lin that as he won the fight, she should reward him with 100 credits. She asks him not to worry, no one dares to refuse the supervision of their martial arts club. She also says that the way he fought was too shameless. Wang says he will be careful next time. Then another student who tells his name is Zhu Kun, a sophomore, asks Wang that after his military training tonight, he must come to have a match with him too. Wang says it does not matter who his opponent is, get the credits ready. Zhu Kun says this kid deserves a beating and will give him a good lesson tonight. Later, when Wang reaches the ground at night, Zhu hopes the junior is ready as this will be painful. Wang asks him to quit his nonsense and come at him already. Wang thinks it looks like Zhu is serious, so he will give him a decent fight. Then the fight starts. This time Wang is not using bricks as a weapon. Students are shocked to see this Wang is fighting head to head with the senior. He is so fierce. Zhu notices Wang is fighting with fists too and says this is interesting. But soon, he feels his opponent is so strong he suspects he is hiding this kind of strength when he fights with Wai Hua. Wang tells him that it is best not to get distracted when fighting him. While the students say wow, brother Wang Tang is fierce, even the seniors are no match for him. According to them, this guy is simply a monster. Zhu also realizes this kid is too challenging to deal with and decides to finish him when he is almost tired. 
Wang says he also admires his senior's strength, which is why he will give him a horn too. So he throws a brick on his face too. The judge announces that the competition is over. Although Wang won, he promised previously that he would not use that weapon again. Wang laughs and says he just knocked him out. While he thinks in his mind that he cannot say that a lot of attribute bubbles fall off when he hits the head, and he just sucked in a big wave of attributes. One of his seniors, Chen Su, says he did not expect his junior's boxing skills to be so powerful, but Wang says it was all just his luck. Senior Zhu Kun is firm, and he almost lost to him. Both the judges say only ghosts will believe him. Then Yang Lin asks him if he is interested in joining their martial arts clubs. She says they are here to referee the competition but also want to examine his strength and character. Wang says he thought the martial arts club oversees the matches. She says the martial arts club is responsible for maintaining the rear of martial arts, but the academy is full of masters. Chen Su also says they would die bored if they did not care about anything. The existence of the martial arts club is actually to maintain and check the balances in the academy. And Wang can also get 5 credits every month if he joins the martial art club, he further says. Wang agrees and says he will join them then. He thinks joining the martial arts club may be troublesome, but the benefits outweigh the troubles. Chen Su thinks the martial arts clubs have recruited the boss, that is awesome. He also admires that he is so lucky and robust at the same time. A few students come towards Wang and say he defeated another senior and joined the martial arts club. This is a double happiness, brother Wang must give them a treat today. Wang says he just got 200 credits and now these guys want to suck off of him. A few days later, when Wang is taking some rest, a student arrives and tells him that he is challenged by another senior. Wang says what the hell, he has just beaten up dozens of seniors a few days ago. But the student says it is different this time. This challenge was sent by senior Zhao Dai who used to live in Wang's room number one in C district, but Wang pushed him away, and he is furious over it. Wang says oh, it is him. He already knew that Zhao Dai would be the first person to trouble him, but he asks why Zhao Dai is challenging him not. It is maybe because of the reason that now he has complete confidence. That student tells him that he heard that Zhao Dai is very powerful, and he probably has already studied Wang thoroughly. Wang says no worries, if he has examined him thoroughly, then just let him come. After that, he thinks he has picked up more than a dozen attributes in the past few days, and he is about to rise to the four-star soldier level, so he should not be afraid of a Zhao Dai. On the other side, Zhao Dai is still studying about Wang and says this kid does have two brushes. His mentor asks him if he is sure he will defeat him because he is the first person in the second grade, and if he loses two, their sophomores will be thoroughly disgraced. But Zhao Dai says no matter how strong Wang is, he will never exceed the level of a one-star warrior, so that he will be defeated. He says he was the first freshman last year, laying all kinds of challenges. He should have graduated smoothly all the way just like this, but this damn Wang Tang came out to steal his limelight. On the other side, all the club members are called there in the martial arts club. They ask their leader, Lao Zhuang, if there is any task for them. A girl also says she would like to do a few more jobs. Lao Zhuang says the main reason for calling them here is to look at the list of freshmen Chen Su and Yang Lin handed it, so they should make a decision together. The girl says these are all first-year students with great potential. Some uncertainties still need to be investigated later. Their martial arts club is looking for recruits, so they must consider many aspects and should not be hasty. One member says the strength of the first freshman is mysterious. He says he has also heard a little about him, recently, he has been rumored to fight Zhu Taewu. The girl says when the time comes, they can see it themselves. Another member says what's so interesting about a first-year student, Zhao Dai is free and does not mind losing his status in fighting with the freshmen. Those who were able to compete in the sophomore year were all defeated by Wang Tang. If he did not make a move, others would think he was afraid of Wang Tang. While the authorities of the War College say that Zhao Dai is the head student of their sophomore War College, and the sense of crisis that Wang Tang brought to him is pretty strong. A female member says if such a strong first-year student joins their war college, they can steal all the fun. A man tells her she does not understand. When two tigers fight, one is bound to be injured, and he feels sorry. That lady says Zhao Dai is just showing off. If Zhao Dai loses, he must be struck, and it should not be so, no matter how powerful Wang Tang is, he will come here. Another person says maybe, Wang is hiding something profound. The lady says that Wang almost concealed the General Academy. 
If the authorities ask her, she will say that such an intelligent seedling should come to their command college to strategize. It is also said that a good man does not live long and suffers for a thousand years. Only by living long can he go far and become stronger. This kid should belong to their war college because they like this kid more and more. The next day, so many people came to see the match. Teacher Liu from the War College, Teacher Wang from the Command College, and Teacher Lin from the Forging College are all here. Zhao Dai's mentor also comes to see the match, and people say he must care about today's game for him to come here personally. He spent a lot of effort training Zhao Dai from his first year. Zhao Dai's success or failure is also related to the honor of his teaching career. Students say Zhao Dai has already arrived, and Wang Teng is not here, it seems like he is getting scared. While another student said senior sophomores got beaten up by Wang Tang, then why would he be scared? Then Wang Tang also arrives there. Wang is asked the reason for being late, as the time given to him was noon. Wang says there is still one more minute remaining, so he is on time. Then Wang is informed that today's fight is different from the previous ones. It is a fight of life and death. So Wang is again asked if he still wants to step forward. Xiao Dai's strength has reached the peak of one star Solider, and he is way more potent than the previous challengers. Wang fought again, and Wang is still a freshman, so he has the right to refuse. Xiao Dai's mentor says Wang Tang himself decided this match. If he admits defeat and fights timidly, his student will naturally not be too hard on him. The judges say how troublesome it is for an instructor to get into a fight between two students. Xiao Dai's mentor is asked not to intervene in the rules of the martial arts club. He can only give his opinions to the school or those big guys who have left the martial arts cub. Then, the mentor realizes he should not have raised his argument with those big bosses and generals, as it can cause death. Then Junior Wang Tang is asked to think it over by himself. Zhao Dai says if Wang does not dare to fight him, go back and do not waste his time. He asks Wang if he is going to fight with him or not. Wang says this kind of pediatric provocation is useless to him. But since Zhao Dai wants to fight with him so much, then he will also fight. Senior sister Yang Lin also advises Wang to be so careful. Wang thanks her for her concern. Then Wang talks to Zhao Dai and says there is one thing he is curious about. And that is, there is no enmity between him and Zhao Dai. But this is the first time Wang has heard that Zhao Dai can live and die after reading the challenge book. He further says that the previous seniors challenged him, and he could see that they had no intention of killing him, but instead, they were just after his rank. Today, Zhao Dai made him understand that he was naive. Zhao Dai says that in the martial arts battle, it is not only the victory or defeat but also the decision of life and death. Wang says alright, he gets it. The judges say Zhao Dai has already drawn his battle sword, but Wang is still just standing there. The fight then begins. Soon it seems like Zhao Dai killed Wang in just one move, as Wang is going to lose the match. But Wang appears from behind the Zhao Dai and asks him not to be distracted. He attacks back then, and Zhao Dai realizes he has fast speed, which is already beyond essential agility. The audience says it seems like Wang is using force combat skills like agility. Zhao Dai is also trying to understand what is happening to him. He was not expecting Ji this kid to be so strong. Wang asks him what is the matter senior, as it looks like he has got up. Wang continues hitting him from all directions. Zhao Dai says he thought he could quickly deal with this kid. Then he says he will show him his real strength now. The audience is shocked to see that Zhao Dai deliberately suppressed the realm, and he made a breakthrough in the middle of the fight. He is now at the level of a two-star soldier. Wang says it was his trump card, and he also says that he had suspected this possibility. Zhao Dai tells him that he knows Wang is strong. But now that he is a two-star soldier, so now Wang cannot fight him, and their sophomore's reputation can be saved now. Zhao Dai's people also cheer him up and say come on, show this kid his true powers. Wang says sorry, but he also accidentally broke through, now that everyone has broken through, so continues the fight again. Zhao Dai says he does not believe his breakthrough strength is inferior to Wang's. They start fighting again. Zhao Dai's mentor observes this freshman's strength is actually on par with Zhao Dai's. Zhao Dai says now the fight must end here. He asks Wang not to blame him because Wang's presence will only shorten Zhao Dai's future resources, so he must get rid of him to ensure his development. Wang then throws the brick on his head, too, and says he does not care about resources or anything. He also says that as Zhao Dai wants to step on him to climb up, he is sorry, but he will let him fall into the bottomless abyss. Zhao Dai starts coughing as he is injured. Wang tells him that, by the way, his swordsmanship is garbage, but he will show him now what authentic swordsmanship looks like. When Wang uses his sword, the audience says what a strong sword aura he possesses. They admire Wang Tang's swordsmanship is so good. 
When someone says the way Wang moves his swords is a bit cruel. 2. The judge says it was Zhao Dai who put down the idea of life and death, so stop talking about being ruthless now. Zhao Dai comprehended the sword's power. People say this Zhao Dai is worthy of being the number one sophomore year student. He had two aces up his sleeves. But Wang Tang is going to be in danger. Zhao Dai comprehending the sword's power made a big difference in their combat strength. Wang says it is interesting that his opponent is trying to push him far like this, but he will return his strike to him. He also admits that his opponent is a fantastic man, but now he will show him his sword powers also. The audience says it seems like Zhao Dai's lost, and Wang has also comprehended the sword's power, which is even stronger than Zhao Dai's. The seniors also admit that Wang Tang's talent is so terrifying and it will be tough for their university to manage to recruit such a monster. They also noticed that he just used the original power of the fire element. It was not expected from this kid to be a dual element martial artist. He did it very well, they admire him. One of the judges says he is now a two-star martial artist who is good with fists and palms, comprehends the power of swords, and is also a dual element wielder. Now, the dean and the others are going to get alerted. Zhao Dai's mentor comes close to him and tries to bring him back to his senses. The audience thinks he is dead and says they did not expect such a genius to die like this. Zhao Dai's mentor also says Wang is so cruel, as he killed him. The judges come forward and stop mentor Chen and say it's enough, he is going too far. Mr. Chen asks Senior Zhuang, from Martial Arts Club, who is also serving as judge, what he means by this, he has not said anything for which he is blamed for going too far. Zhuang says as a mentor, they will not sit idly by as he makes things difficult for a student in the martial arts arena. He also says that it looks like teacher Chen loves his disciple, so he does not want to be an enemy of the martial arts club. Zhao Dai died in this battle, and teacher Chen also lost his composure because he felt sad. He then asks other teachers to take teacher Chen inside for rest. When teachers are taking him back, Wang asks teacher Chen if he may have many other students who are close to him so he does not need to arrange for them to challenge him. Instead, when he has time, he will challenge them all one by one. He says now he is a two-star warrior so that he will challenge his two-star warrior disciples first. And similarly, when he becomes a three-star, he will challenge his three-star warrior disciples, and so on, until all of them are killed. Mr. Chen says he is so arrogant. Wang says he has never been afraid of threats, and whoever threatens him, he will make sure to kill them all. He says further that if he is not convinced, then go and prepare more credits to challenge him. As long as they are on the same level as him, he won't reject the challenger. As an instructor, Chen is a 5-star warrior, so he will challenge and kill him when he advances to a 5-star warrior. Mr. Chen says Wang thinks of himself as an invincible, but Wang says invincible or not, he will indeed challenge him. Mr. Chen says he will kill him first, then Wang asks him to come one and let's do it then. Mr. Chen says someone is protecting Wang inside the university but not outside. They still have a long way to go. Wang thinks about Mr. Chen and says that this guy will definitely seek trouble with him in the future, and says, fortunately, he has a golden finger and will be able to advance to a five-star martial artist without much trouble. His status window says he has obtained intermediate gold talent plus 8 gold sword powers. He says Zhao Dai's attribute bubbles are perfect, with intermediate gold element talent and even 8 points of gold element sword skills. He then tells his seniors and sisters that since the fight is over, he will go back to have some rest first. They said, alright, he should go back and have a good rest. After coming back to his room, he cultivates for some time. He says the fire type swords are hot and fierce, and the gold type blades are sharp and concentrate in one point to exert force. They will be mighty if combined and used in the future. After some time, he stands up and says he has earned so many credits, so now it is time to go and have a good meal. On the other side, the school authorities held a meeting where all teachers were invited. Dean Peng Yuan says he did not expect this kid Wang Tang to cause such big trouble for him. He wanted to beat him up. Another senior says Chen Ziyangming is finished now while the other teacher says Chen deserved it. Back then, he was scared out of his wits when he went to the battlefield, and he lost his martial arts will. After returning, he relied on his disciples to compete for resources, he was a coward. The lady says Mr. Chen may be behind the scenes and fueling the flames, but it is Zhao Dai's choice to fight to the death. He put a lot of effort into cultivating Zhao Dai, but he was waiting for Zhao Dai to be in a high position to get the greatest reward. But Wang Tang shattered his wishful thinking. Peng Yuan says there is no such thing as right and wrong in a martial arts duel, and they cannot blame others if they lose. He then asks others to discuss how to deal with Chen Ziyangming. 
one teacher says Chen should be removed from the status of mentor. It is noted that blatantly threatening students is not suitable for the image of other tutors. Some students were already questioning the tutor's authority on the way here, while another female teacher says this is a bit unreasonable, as Mr. Chen has worked hard for so many years without any credit. Then Dean Peng says he will keep his position as a mentor, but he will be sent to the foreign battlefield for half a year and see his performance. The meeting is dismissed. He says, by the way, he has already notified the principal about Wang Tang, and they will make a decision after the principal returns. Other teachers say the principal is returning, so that kid should not be spoiled. A few days later, in the college mission receiving office, Wang also arrives to see about his admission. He says there are many types of tasks, military missions, police station missions, city guard missions, school missions, and alien missions. He will take advantage of the weekend by taking a short-term mission to test the waters. He will take the collect herbs in Chunhua Mountain mission. He then selected this mission, and his admission was accepted successfully. The next day, he hires a car and reaches the Chunhua Mountain for his mission. He asks the taxi driver to wait for him here. He should return before sunset. The taxi driver asks him not to worry, as he hires his car so that he will listen to his arrangements today. Wang sees a woman sitting there. He asks her the way to get into the Chunhua Mountains. She says the hills are unsafe, and he is still young, so she advises him to go home. Wang tells her that he has something important to do in the mountains, so do not worry about him. He says he must be mentally prepared and won't make fun of his life since he came here. She becomes angry and says urbanities like him do not listen to the persuasion. Yesterday, three young people insisted on going into the mountain, but they have not come out yet. Wang asked her the details of those people that what they were wearing, and did they tell her why they entered the mountain. Wang says he is just casually asking all this and says they should treat it as buying information from her. He gives her some money, then she says the three of them similarly like him, and they seem to carry weapons. They said they were looking for things in the mountains and asked the herbal pickers in the village to guide them. Wang thinks those people may also be here to pick the phantom flame grass. He feels he is going to fail his first mission. But he says he has already come this far, so he must go into the mountains and look for himself. Maybe they are all searching for different things. He then inquires about the herbal pickers in the villages. She tells him that none is left. There is only one family. Now very few people are willing to go into the mountains. And that herbal picker is an older man, Bai. His daughter also often goes up the hill and is familiar with the mountain. He can go and ask her. Wang thanks Auntie and requests to tell him the address of the herbal picker. The old lady says he is very polite, so this auntie will take him to their home directly. When they arrive, she asks if Miss Bai is at home because someone is looking for her. When Miss Bai comes outside, the auntie tells her that this young man from the city wants to go into the mountains and is looking for a guide, so she can help him out with this. So she asks him to come in and have a talk. Then she tells him that she heard that he wanted to go into the mountain and that it is also rumored that three young men also entered the mountains. Wang shows something on a mobile screen to her and asks if those men are looking for this thing. She says this is a phantom flame grass and asks if she is here to find this, too. Wang says as she knows about the phantom flame grass, their objective seems to be the same as his and they are also here for this. Since that is the case, would she tell him where the phantom flame grass is? She says she knows, her dad told her about it but she has not been there. When Wang asks her to give the map of the mountain, she says they'd not have any mountain, they enter the mountain purely based on experience. She also says that although she has not been there, she knows the way and will take him there and find her father, but she demands money for all of this. When Wang asks for the fee, she says 5,000 or 3,000 is okay. Wang says okay, he will give 5,000. He promises to give her more money if she can take him there before noon. She then changes clothes and gets some tools so they can leave soon. Then she tells her mom he is going out with a friend to care for something. She will have Auntie keep her company. They move towards the mountain. When they reach the Chunhua mountain, she asks him to be very careful, as there are poisonous snakes and insects in this mountain. Wang says it is alright, she can pay attention to herself. Then she says they will pass through there in a movement. Her dad has taken her through here before. A thought, it is a difficult way, it is a shortcut. Wang asks her to lead the way then. While walking, she feels he has been walking for so long without even breathing heavily. She suspects he could be a martial artist. She says the phantom flame grass they are looking for must be precious. If she could pick a couple of stems, that would be great. Wang asks Miss Bai if it is shocking that they have not seen any other person's footprint along the way. 
She says it has been a long time since she last visited the mountain with her father. Maybe they found another route. Wang asks her to be careful because her dad would not abandon this familiar path without a reason unless this road is dangerous. She says this is the only road she knows, so what should she do now? Wang asks her to keep moving forward with caution. Suddenly, they encounter a bunch of ants. She says it is a strange beast, Wang deals with them. Miss Bai says this is all her fault, she must be careful. When she sees him using his skills to kill ants, she is amazed to know he is a martial artist. Wang asks her to stop being in a gaze and be careful of where she steps on. He won't be able to do anything if a poisonous snake bites her. She says she is surprised to see such young martial artists. It is pretty impressive. They reach where her dad has seen phantom flame grass near here. She says they can find one if they search here. They see a tree over there, Wang says he will go down and she will stand here and be careful. Wang says it was worth the trip, as there are a few more phantom flame grasses. When he tries to take the grass out, a snake holds around his arm. He kills it and says it's just a mere snake, so she must stop worrying. He says he will take some more with him since there is a lot of phantom flame grass here. When he finishes everything, he returns and asks her to return. She says he is so fast, no wonder he is such an influential martial artist. He quickly took care of that deadly snake. She thinks she would make lots of money every minute if she were as strong as this guy. Wang asks her to go down the mountain as they have nothing more to do here. While going back, Wang stops at one place and tells her that someone is there. She says it could be her dad and those three guys. When they move near them, she runs towards her dad and says it is significant that he is alright, and says she and her mom have been worried all night. Dad asks her the reason for entering the mountain, as he had ordered her not to come there. She tells him that someone offered her money to have her show him the way, so she accompanied him to search for phantom flame grass. She also asks her dad not to worry, as this man is powerful, and they have already picked the phantom flame grass. One of those three men asks Wang if he got phantom flame grass. Wang says he indeed picked the phantom flame grass, these guys are late. Judging by their age and attire, they are probably martial arts students from some other school. They say that is unfortunate. The three of them have had such bad luck on their first mission. One of them says no, they cannot go back like this. Miss Bai says she might have caused some trouble, but her father says it is partly his fault for not warning her earlier. Both sides look challenging to deal with. He does not think Ding Zhang will let them off that easily. They ask Wang if they presume he is also a student from some school, and asks if he is picking these for a school task. Wang says that is right and asks them to let him through, as he is in a hurry. Ding Zhang says his fellow student, their instructor, assigned them a task to collect the phantom flame grass, and he picked it all. Then, how can they complete the job now? Wang says that does not matter to him. He also has a task to finish. If they were the ones who found the phantom flame grass first, would they have given it to him? Ding Zhang says there are three of them, and he is all alone, so he orders his fellows to grab it from him. He asks Wang to hand over the phantom flame grass, otherwise, do not blame them for being impolite. Wang says these guys have watched too many TV shows, talking so much nonsense. When they are about to attack Wang, a one-star beast appears there from one side. Everyone is afraid of it. Miss Bai asks Wang to run away. But Wang says this beast is foolish, out of so many people, it had to provoke him. Wang soon killed that beast. They all are impressed by him. Then he turns towards them and asks what they are talking about. But Ding Zhang and his fellows say there might have been a misunderstanding between them just now. They say that they want to say that if he picked the phantom flame grass, it is his only. They cannot take it from him forcibly. Wang smiles and says it means they do not want to fight. They say yes, not anymore. Wang says, he was thinking of sharing a few with them, but since they do not want it, they forget it. They say they still have something to do, so that they will leave first. After they are gone, Wang says the flesh and blood of this dead python beast are of great benefit to Miss Bai and her father. If they do not mind the trouble, they can take it down the mountain. Otherwise, they will feed the beasts if they stay there. Miss Bai says they will take it and pay him thanks. Then Wang says them goodbye and leave. Miss Bai says he is not someone from their world. On the other side, Ding Zhang and his fellows finally reached the foot of the mountain and decided to hurry and go. They cannot even think to waste a single minute here. He says that was so scary. From now on, he keeps a low profile whenever he goes out. Who knows when he might run into some expert. They wondered from which school that guy belonged because he was so scary. Ding Zhang guesses that he is from the military school. He says that boy might participate in this year's national martial arts competition, and they will know who he is. While returning back to the academy, Wang finally managed to submit the task before the deadline ended. He feels exhausted and decides to take a shower and get some good rest quickly. But suddenly, he realizes someone is behind his back. A lady is standing behind him. 
When he asks who she is, that lady attacks him at once. Wang strikes back, but she catches his punch. Wang feels she is so strong and has some strong skills. He thinks if he has offended someone, and as a result, they have sent such a strong person as a punishment. He realizes he cannot win against her. It is said that a true man should know when to fight and when to run. So he also decides to run and says as long as he runs to the corridor and shouts out loud, the strong ones in the school will come to save him. But he cannot run, it seems like she set up rune formation in advance just to kill him. He says now that the building has been activated, he cannot get out of there, but he can't even call for help with sound transmission. The only option he has is to fight by himself. So he returns to fight and soon realizes this person is whole of strength and responds with a pretty fast speed. This is his first time seeing such a bright force beam. He says if this girl is more potent than him, he can't just sit and wait for his death, he has to keep fighting. He knows if he wants to survive, he can only try to find a way to break this rune formation and escape when he has the chance. He knows despite all the difficulties, there is still a chance. He finally uses a final blow to break the rune formation and pushes a button to call for help. But that lady then sits down calmly and asks him to stop messing around. She says her nails broke and says he is a pretty patient kid. When Wang asks her who she is, she asks him to guess it. Wang says now that he thinks about it, their fight just now was so intense, yet this woman's clothes do not have any marks. Her strength is unfathomable. When she sees him looking at her so blatantly, she asks where he is looking at. Wang asks the reason for her arrival here. She says Lao Peng said their school produced an outstanding genius and asked her to come back from the battlefield to have a look. Wang knows Lao Peng is the full name of General Peng. Then she introduces herself as the principal of Wang's school. Wang is surprised to know she is his principal and again confirms to her that whatever she is saying is true. He says she was not joking. Tun Taik Xuan is the principal of this school. Then Peng Yuan arrives there and says principal that it would be best if she checks Wang Tang's strength at another place, just like the headquarters. Peng tells Wang that he came here to say to him that she is indeed their dean and he does not need to have scruples. She is here to test his abilities, Wang says, but his abilities have already been thoroughly exposed. Then, he cannot understand why he is being tested repeatedly. Principal Tun Taik Xuan asks Lao Peng to stop rambling and says everything is okay now so that he can return first. She will take care of this kid's matter. He should go and handle the school's affairs quickly. Lao Peng says she still knows that the school has a lot of things to do. She dumped everything on him and disappeared without taking responsibility. When he goes back, Tun Tai tells Wang that she trusted Lao Peng to handle everything when she saw that he was capable. Wang asks whether he thanked her for all this. She says to be able to speak so openly and honestly about slacking off is rare. He then asks the principal if she does not have anything to do, she should go and rest. He will also be busy in the morning, so he needs to prepare for his early classes. She says there is no hurry, they have not even discussed the main topic yet. She says he is quite the hidden talent. He is at the level of a three-star warrior, but his strength rivals that of a four-star warrior. She also advises him to still focus on being a multi-attribute warrior. She counts that he can calculate ice, fire, gold wind, and many more attribute skills that he has. Wang says these four are sufficient, other attributes must not be exposed in front of her now. She says if they assume these four elements for now, every warrior has their little secrets, and she won't pry too much. Besides, it is not a big deal. She has encountered a few multi-attribute warriors before, but unfortunately, she has killed them all and could not see much of their abilities. While listening to all this, Wang thinks she not only has a lousy personality as a school principal, but she is also ruthless. He asks her about the number of martial artists from the four clans she has killed. She laughs and says it seems he is also afraid of her. Wang says she has a grand stature with unparalleled elegance and charm. He admires and respects her. She orders him to kneel and bow his head. When Wang hesitates to do him, she says she is a general-ranked warrior, so she has the qualifications to be his master. Wang thinks that this woman can feel that she could become his master. She says it looks like he is unwilling to obey her order. But Wang says, not true, as he is willing. If she wants him to be her disciple, he agrees and has knelt already. He thinks this woman is a general-ranked warrior, so that he would obey her. The aim is to become her disciple, they will be on the same side. When she says he looks a bit uncomfortable, he says to his principal they should also keep up with the times when it comes to the tradition of becoming a disciple. He seeks her permission, as he wishes to offer her a cup of tea and cook her a meal as a token of her appreciation. Just as a disciple student, she says she knows what he is trying to do here, and if he does not want to kneel, then do not kneel. Wang becomes happy and says he will go to make tea for her right away. 
A few minutes later, he offers her a cup of tea. When she drinks it, she says it is not bad, he has prepared it properly. Then she asks him to hold off on the food for now. She says her standards are very high, so she will consider it when he reaches the level of a master chef in terms of culinary skills. She also says that she used to find it troublesome and never took on any disciples. This time, it was Peng who urged her repeatedly, and also, he, Wang is indeed to her liking. Wang considers her so arrogant. She says further that over the years, those before her used to show off their apprentices in front of her. Now, she gets to do it and asks him not to disappoint her. When Wang asks her about the people she is talking about and how strong are their disciples, she says even if she tells him, he would not know. They are all at the level of battle generals. And as far as the disciples go, according to her, the strongest one should have reached the story of a six-star battle soldier, but that was half a year ago. She says that being her disciple still has its benefits. She heard about what happened to Chen Xiangming last time. If anyone dares to rely on their seniority again in the future, she will beat them up for him. Wang says she is kind. If he is in trouble in the future, may he use her name as a reference. She says she knew he was an unruly kid, but that is precisely what she likes about him. If there is anything, use her name. Those afraid of her won't come to find her anyway, and those not scared of her reporting her name won't make any difference. Then she says that is enough for today and asks him to come to her place tomorrow night. Because, as his master, she has to teach him something. When she leaves, Wang says finally, he got rid of this crazy woman. But, eventually, he can start picking up the attribute bubbles. He can begin to make a fortune now, and he thinks more. While picking up the attribute bubbles, he feels one is strange. It looks dull and unremarkable. The status window congratulates him for obtaining the black bellet attribute. He wonders that this woman also possesses such an overflowing attribute. Then he moves towards his egg and says he hopes he did not hurt his egg after all this. It looks like the fight did not damage this egg. But he sees it is broken from one side. He thinks maybe it is going to hatch. When it hatches out, he says what an exciting thing to look at, and it might be the remaining descendant of the star beast. Looking at it, the baby seems black, fat, and stupid, and there is no such thing as a great raven. It sits on his shoulder, he wonders how to feed it now. Then he says, since it is a star beast, he will feed it some star beast. The meat of the python is still in his space, so he gives this meat to this little star beast, and says when it finishes eating, it will better grow up quickly. The following day, he reaches the place where his teacher lives. He says it is rather luxurious for a teacher's dorm. When he knocks on the door, he is asked to come inside, as the door is not locked. The teacher says he arrives here early and asks him to close the door while he is there. Then she orders food for him, as she does not have anything at her home right now. Wang feels like she is a woman that does not go out for long periods. She says she is also hungry and may be unable to teach him now. He thinks she must eat and then teach him, or he will feel guilty. She says without further ado she knows about his powers. His goal is not to outdo his peers but to outdo everyone. She tells further that everyone involved is not just his peers but young, talented warriors, they are his competition. She advises him to think long term, not just for the school. She says she has met invincible warriors, they even beat many older generations, and now they cry for their parents. Wang is her apprentice, but if he is not better than her, he is not much worse. Wang thinks that this witch talks too much. She continues talking and says there is no need to rush since they have such talent in their senior class. She will set a goal for him, and he will duel one of the hundred best students every day until he reaches the top. Wang becomes shocked and says it looks like she wants him to become a huge target. He does not want them all to resent him. She feels he becomes sacred, then says if he defeats them all, everyone in the school will respect and fear him. The strong stick together so he will not be alone. Duels are common amongst warriors, except for some small-minded people. Most will lose, and after a good training session, get back to the arena, they won't have to worry. Then the door knocks again, and she asks him to go and get the food, as she is starving to death. When he opens the door, the delivery man asks about his identity. He says he is her disciple. Then, food is handed over to him. He brings it to her, and when she opens it, he says there is something good inside as it smells so good. He is surprised to see the legendary shining dish. She tells him this is a masterpiece of the chef, the fat man who gave them this food. When he asks the teacher why this food is so shining, she tells him it is because of the Kai. Magic cooking is all about star beasts and elixirs. Unique cooking methods stimulate the original Kai and the ingredients to achieve the effect of cultivation. This is why the master chef must be a warrior. He understands that only a warrior can sense and use Kai. She says that the mainland can run this kitchen for only so long, 
so it is scarce. Then she informs him they will go with another teacher, have dinner, and play sports. Wang says this is not good to exercise after eating. She says she won't be teaching him personal things like cultivation methods and warfare that easily. Starting today, she will suppress her strength and spar with him, cultivating his fighting awareness and experience. She further says that experience and awareness genuinely matter for a martial artist. Many warriors from the battlefield do not have profound cultivation techniques. They can still easily defeat some so-called talented warriors. Having strength without the necessary corresponding combat power will only be in vain as she does not want him to become that kind of warrior. Then she says she did not fully enjoy the fight last night, but today, they will fight. So she comes forward to attack him. Wang says her moves are so impressive, and she is so powerful. She did not use much strength to fight with him last night. They fight for a long time. After half an hour, Wang lies down and says his master was too brutal with her attacks. She says foolish disciple, this is for his good. In the future, the people he encounters may use deadly force against him. She is doing this to reveal his potential. She asks him to take some rest and says he will be fine. She also asks him to go to the pharmaceutical department and buy a bottle of black jade ointment. It will rejuvenate his boy and allow him to continue training tomorrow. Wang says alright, he is going back now. She asks him to be careful on the way. After that, she says she got lucky with one. Back then, she would not have progressed this much like him. Wang comes to the pharmaceutical store and asks for one jade ointment. The receptionist tells him the total cost is 100 credits, and he can use it for 5 days. Wang says it is so expensive, but the receptionist says this is not expensive, the price is fair. Wang takes it then, he also thinks as this is too expensive, it looks like he needs to find a way to make more credits. The girl in reception says the credits cannot be earned endlessly, they only have meaning when spent. Wang says he has to challenge the top 100 of the academy every day, in this way he can be able to earn more credits. After reaching his room, he reads the prescription for ointment and comes to know that the cream needs to be used with hot water for best results. He tries it on his body and says the bomb feels cool and refreshing. Other than that, there is nothing much to it. The next day, he comes to the school. He says he did not expect the cold ointment to boil and sweep through the meridians of his body when it meets hot water. He knocks on the door of number 100 Zona he believes the person inside is the weakest among the top 100 students. He is also sure he can beat him, but he is afraid that he is not in school right now. If the challenge does not happen, he does not know what that hellion will do to him, Wang fears. Then, the door opens, and a student comes outside. He recognizes Wang Teng. Wang asks Yu Kun, may he ask him if he is free tonight? When Yu Kun says no, Wang says he is not asking for hookups, not for dating, among other things, but he is here to challenge him. Yu Kun is astonished to know that he is being challenged. Wang says sorry, he has no choice because it is the teacher's order. He then asks Kun to attend the martial arts arena at 7 o'clock tonight. Yu Kun says he will join him in a fight and let him see the strength of the top 100. Wang says okay then, he will wait for him there and goes back. After he is gone, Yu Kun says he is a genius as he becomes a disciple quickly. He also wonders who his master is and calls him so lucky as he has obtained his mentor's favor so early. While walking in the school, Wang hears students talking to each other that the senior student Yu Kun, who ranks 100th, is going to fight with someone. They say maybe he is going to participate in a martial arts competition, but they are curious to know who he will fight with tonight. They say this is big news, hurry and call people to come and watch. Wang also calls his teacher and tells her and says he is sure he will win. If he fails, then she can deal with him in her way. After ending the call, he says this woman will enjoy prolonging his monstrous training. Then Zhu Zioli, a third-year student majoring in conduction at the 96th college, comes towards him and says hello. He also tells Wang that his original name was Zhu Changling, but because of his admiration for Zhu Liang, he changed his name. When he surpasses him one day, he will change his name to Zhu Daoliang. Wang says he is talented, but by the way, why did he call him? Wang thinks he may need something from him. Juj says as it is rumored that Yu Quin is going to have a competition with someone, and nobody knows who the opponent is. That is why he is here and wants Wang to make a small bet for fun. He says he heard that the challenger is powerful. The odds are 3 to 1, so does Wang want to play. A few students also arrive there, and they know Juj has been caught many times, and he still wants to open the betting. Juj asks if anyone wants to play or not. Then, students start betting. Someone bets 100 credits on Yu Kun to win. Another student also bets the same. While the third one bets 50 credits on Yu Kun to win. Wang asks them not to rush and go on quickly. He says he will also bet 100 credits on the challenger to win. 
someone tells Wang that he knows that Juge is deceiving him, and yet, he is still playing along. Wang says it is just 100 credits, not a big deal. Wang then says he is going off to the duel now. All the students there are shocked that this kid is the challenger. Later, on the battlefield, Juge says this freshman dares to challenge Yu Kue, ranked in the top 100. He admits this kid has some skills but is too full of himself. From the looks of his, he seems confident in his abilities. Juge says he does not think he is a fool. He also says it seems like not everyone thinks that Wang Tang will win. This is getting interesting. Although the competition has not started yet, he has plenty of time to gather more people to place bets. While inside the ground, Yu Quin is saying to Wang that everyone's expectation of the match is Wang's predetermined loss. Such a pity, Wang says it does not matter, he is only here to complete the task assigned by his master, and he does not need people's approval. Quinn says his words are making him angry when he is saying he is only here to complete the task assigned by his master. He then asks them to start the fight with all their might, and says if he is nothing more than a task, Wang still has to prove that he can handle one of the top 100. Then the competition begins. After some time, students say Yu Quinn is so strong. It is obvious why he is one of the top 100 martial artists. But Wang Tang is also so powerful, they admit. Wang says this is the power of a 3-star war soldier level martial artist. While Quinn says Wang is so impressive, no wonder he dared to challenge him. Both of them use various skills to attack each other. The audience says this kid can be on par with Quinn. They say maybe Yu Quinn has not used all his strength yet. While fighting, Quinn says this kid is vicious and wonders how someone with only a 2-star war soldier level of power can keep up with him, who is using his full strength. Wang says he finally understands his master's intentions. It was to allow his fighting experience with others to integrate with his martial arts. Quinn feels his defenses can't keep up with this kid's increasing attack power. It is challenging for him to believe this little scoundrel treats him like a training partner. He says Wang sees him as a mere training tool. The audience yells with excitement that Yu Quinn is using his wild lion, raging gang fist. Wang also thinks it might be his combat technique. This technique is driven by anger. The angrier the user gets, the greater the power becomes. But Wang tackles this technique with a profound efficiency. Soon, Yu Quinn lost the match. The path to the top 100 is strenuous, and he says he held on tightly to his title in hopes of not being surpassed. He never expected he would ever be defeated. People see how this kid defeated the top 100th warrior. When Quinn is moving out of the ground, Wang says he has finally completed the task given by his master. He says he does not want to think anymore. The strong are respected in the martial arts world. They then return to report to the master. People say Wang Tang is too brilliant. He can even defeat senior students in the top 100. They cannot believe that a first-year student can be too strong. It is beyond belief. When Wang is going to report to the master, Zhuge stops him and tells him he is here to give Wang credit. He also says Wang kept an accurate low profile. He says thanks, as he made a small profit from the bets today. Wang says it is no big deal, but he plans on challenging more students in the top 100. He then asks Zhuge if he is interested in collaborating with him. Zhuge says undoubtedly, he can tell that Wang is a capable person who can achieve great things, and he has no problem cooperating with him but he asks how they can divide the credit. Wang says 50-50 split. He is confident in winning against every opponent, depending on whether or not Zhuge trusts him. Zhuge asks him to hold on and let him think about it. After taking his time, he agrees and says he trusts him. Later, when he reaches his master's place, she asks him how he feels now. Wang says he does not feel much, but it does have some effect. She asks him to go to the training, where they will have fun. She wants to see how much he has improved tonight. Wang says meeting this woman was the first step to further progress in his martial arts path. He thinks his future is limitless. The teacher says she will witness his future. She again fights with him, and after that, she says there has been some progress and asks him to keep up the excellent work. He says thanks for her compliment. Then she asks him to challenge the student who ranks 99th tomorrow. Wang says he got it, and he would not dare to forget what she has instructed him to do. Later, when Wang comes to meet the student in the 99th position, the students say after defeating Quinn, now this kid is here to challenge him. Wang says he can't help it. He informs Mr. Fang Ming that he has to fight with him tonight at 7 p.m. His master assigns him homework every day, and he has to comply. Fang Ming says it seems his master has high expectations of him. So, he wants to witness his monster-like strength by himself. So Wang goes back. He thinks his master is asking him to place a target on his back. Again, a few girls stop him and say they will come tonight to watch him. 
they say he is something else, and he dared to challenge senior students one after another, which is impressive. Wang says no, he is not that good, they are too kind. But he wonders that he just met with Fang Ming. But how did these people find out about this? Then he sees his phone and learns that Zhuge did this. He asks Zhuge about the number of people who have put bets yet. Zhuge replies that around 80 people have placed bets and are all regulars, so do not worry. Wang asks what would happen if he lost the match. Zhuge says that he might lose credits and be punished then. Wang messages him to slow down with the match promotion, as they do not want too much attention. He gets a reply from Zhuge that he should not worry and focus on tonight's match. As long as he wins, they both get profit. In the evening, when the match starts, people cheer both opponents, as many of them have bet all their academic credits on them. In the end, the result is the same as the previous one. Mr. Fang has lost the match. Wang says Senior Fang was going too easy on him. The students say Wang Tang is amazing. He is so powerful and too strong. On the third day, he fights with the 98th position holder warrior. On the sixth day sixth, he fights again and defeats all the opponents until the 13th day. Seniors from the War College say Wang is incredible. Indeed, he is a monster. They believe he will defeat every opponent till the 50th one. But the higher ranked opponents will increase the difficulty exponentially, which is bound to make him struggle. After a long, Wang comes back to his home and tells mom, dad, and Dao Du he is back. His father says his son has finally come back home for the holidays. Everyone missed him so much. Father also asks if he raises a crow-like bird, as he brings a little star beast. But when Wang tells him this is the star beast, the father, then he must raise and nurture it well. His mother tells him that some of Dudu's relatives visited them a few days ago and wanted to take her with them, but she did not want to leave them. She also says she did not like those people very much, as they were too conniving. Wang says well, then, let Dao to be his little sister, and if those people dare to come and cause trouble, he will take care of it. His father says that his son has become a martial artist, and his words are full strength. He then asks Wang his opinion if their Wang family can expand their business into the world of martial arts. Wang says, Dad, there are opportunities out there. Medicinal pills, weapons, and even talismans and artifacts can all be profitable businesses. Father says, however, that this matter needs careful consideration. They should at least wait until he has enough strength to protect their family. Otherwise, they will end up as someone else's pawn. He also says his son always thoroughly thinks things through. They will trust him with the future of the Wang family. Wang says his dad is the pillar of their family, and he still has much to learn from his dad. The next day, when he comes back to school, he thinks about the team captain, as they agreed to go to the other world together today. Then he sees students gathered at a place, asking Captain Lin not to act like he does not remember their agreement. They know that his team has just lost a member, so they are here to join his team. But Captain Lin informs them that he has already told them they have other team members. One student says she knows it is that martial arts exam's top score, but he is only a one-star warrior while her master is a three-star warrior. Her master's is more suitable for Lin's team. Then her master, who is also standing with her, says Captain Lin is just valuing the potential of that Wang Teng. He also says there are martial arts exam champions every year, but no one stands out. Those who get with the times never fall behind. Captain Lin asks they do not need to say anything else, as they won't carelessly abandon any team member. But that master says when Lin repeatedly rejects him in front of so many people, it makes him lose face. He says Lin has a lot of nerve. Another student says to Captain Lin that his master is a high-ranking consul of the Polaris Martial Arts Academy. It does not seem like a wise choice to reject his young master for Wang Teng, who has no background. Captain Lin says this man is threatening him and telling him the truth that Wang Tang was arranged to be in their team by Master Fu. If they have any objections, they can talk to Master Fu about it. The students say they must forget it and move out if that is the case. When they are gone, Wang asks Captain what is going on. Then Lin tells him a second generation martial artist wants him to kick Wang out of the team and replace their master with him. Wang says their master's appearance makes him seem like he has a robust background. But Lin says he does not care. This is the East Sea, and the owner has the final say. Moreover, that kid does not look like he has any good. So, being a captain, he would not feel at ease putting him in his team. He says to let it go, he won't talk about him anymore. Then he says as Wang is here, so they must get going to their destination. When he sees Wang holding the star beast with him, he asks where he got this star beast. Wang asks them not to be surprised. It is rare for a star beast to bond with its owner. Captain Lin says it is pretty rare. They rarely come across star beast babies, and most are still mentally underdeveloped. 
Wang's bird looks very smart at first glance, and it is better to buy a spiritual pet contract from the Fu Bao Ji and bind it with the Star Beast for more security, Captain Lin says further. Wang says his clothes are just about to tear apart and asks his fellow not just to stand there laughing at him but help him out. Later, they reach Fu Bao Ji, and the woman there says they have everything they need at Fu Bao Ji. Wang says he is here because he would like to have a spiritual pet contract. Please. That girl asks them to follow her, she will notify the supervisor immediately. Only he has the authority to access the precious items he needs. When they go to the supervisor, he introduces himself as Lai, the supervisor of Fu Bao Ji, and says it is a pleasure to meet them all. He presents them with the spiritual pet contract that Wang wanted, and asks him to check it first before opening it. Captain Lin asks the price of this spiritual pet contract. Mr. Lai says it is 130 million. Wang says this is a bit too expensive. Even if he has enough money, the price is still insane. Mr. Lai says it's not costly. This spirit pet contract was made by the famous symbol master Ling Su from another world, so the quality is unmatched by ordinary symbol masters. When they see it, Captain Lin says, sure enough, it has the mark of Grand Master Ling Su, and in that case, the price is not considered expensive. Mr. Lai says this is natural. They have always been honest in their business. Wang says luckily, he made over 500 million from hunting the star beasts before, so this amount of money is not a big deal, and he gives his card to pay the amount. After coming out, Liu says Wang does not flaunt it much, but he comes from a wealthy family. Captain Lin says yes, he is indeed a rich kid. Now that they have the spirit pet contract, they must hurry up and go on the mission. So, they start their journey. Liu says this mission is to help the dwarves in the Red Maple Hills clear out the swarm of swift wind mantises. The dwarves' alcohol and weapons are good, but this swarm of swift mantises might be tricky. Wang thinks he can pick up wind attribute bubbles now, and it so happens that his mind attribute value is the lowest and urgently needs to be improved. Liu says that they have not arrived at the Red Maple Hills yet, so Wang should bind a spirit pet contract with the little crow first. Wang says he is right, he almost forgot about this spirit contract. He opens this contract and says how amazing it seems that there is a subtle spiritual connection between him and Little Crow. He can actively perceive their vision. This is amazing. He did not expect the spirit pet contract to have this effect. He then asks the captain about the effects of the spirit pet contract. Captain says it allows him to sense the emotions of the spirit pet and asks if he has felt any other products. Wang says no, there is not anything else. The spirit vision eye probably allows him and the little crow to empathize. Suddenly, their village is attacked by an enemy. The captain asks them if they are all right. Liu falls from her seat. Wang says sorry to sister Liu and tells her he did not do it on purpose. Liu says she will get even with him for this later. Wang asks captain what is going on. The captain says nothing is happening, some people are following them. It seems like they want to take them down. They are so persistent and continue chasing them for a long time. They come out of their veins with guns and attack them. Captain Lin asks fellows to strike back. Wang takes his gun out to shoot them and says he will also want to join in the fun. Jan, one of the enemies, says even from this distance, Liu Yan could not hit him. These youngsters do not know how to behave. Liu says Wang's shooting is very impressive and asks Wang where did he learn to shoot like that. Wang says gunfighting is a great skill and he did not know it from anyone. Captain Lin also appreciates him and says, good job, finish them. Liu asks him to let's compete and see who can get the most kills. He says sure, sister Liu, if he is up for it for this little competition, he is down. The opponent is shocked to see that their firepower is too fierce and asks his people to surround and attack them quickly. They cover the vehicle of Wang and his fellow. Captain Lin asks fellows to hold on tight and attack back with full power. They use their full ability to attack them when gunfires and massive explosions happen and their vehicle becomes out of control. The opponents jump from their vein. Wang and Liu say it is good that they are out now. Captain Lin says how they dare to try to kill him and his fellows. Now, watch how he will deal with them. He attacks fiercely. Wang says damn, the captain is real angry. He is ferocious. Jiang asks Wang to stop looking around aimlessly and show him what he got. He thinks this kid seems like a newbie, probably that one star warrior level recruit. So it would be easy to take him down. On the other side, while looking at that bastard's face, Wang says this fool is looking confident from his expressions but he is also underestimating him. So when Wang comes forward to attack him, he is surprised to see his speed and asks how this is possible, as they said he was a one-star warrior. Wang says he is not a newbie that they can knead and flatten as they like. Soon, he killed Zhang. 
and other enemies are frightened to see that this has killed their two-star warrior level boss in just one attack so ruthlessly. They admit something is wrong. This kid is malicious, so it is better to run first and then decide what to do. Then they dash and say this kid is too scary, they want to live more. Wang sees they are retreating too soon and follows them. One of them stopped running and requested him to spare his life. Wang asks him to answer his questions, and if he is feeling generous, he will spare his life. He says he will tell him everything he knows, ask him. When Wang asks who sent them here, he says it was Master Yao from Yang City. He made deals with many martial artists. He also asked them to attack several teams of martial artists with less than four-star ratings who returned from the Misty Forest three months ago. Captain Lin asks Wang if he has finished over here as well. Wang asks Captain if he has also resolved the situation over there as well. Captain says yes, a sort of situation has been solved. Wang then tells the captain that this person said that they were sent by the head of the Yao family in Yongcheng to intercept them. Liu says she heard that the son of the Yao family's leader was killed in the Misty Forest last month, and the culprit could not be found. Wang says so Yao family decided to take action and not let this go unpunished. That is why they had their ambush and killed all the warriors returning from the Misty Forest. Another fellow says the person responsible for the wrongful act must be held accountable. This Yao family had indiscriminately killed innocent people without any reason. How cruel he is. Another fellow also says that although the world of martial artists is about the survival of the fittest, this kind of behavior is truly despicable. Wang then asks that person about the strength of the Yao family. He says the most vital member of the Yao family should be the family head, who is at the 6-star warrior level. The remaining are 4 5-star warrior level and 8 or 9 4-star warrior level. Liu says this means that the Yao family holds a lot of power. It might be challenging to fight them, but they must try to continue to survive. Wang says yes, they will cross the bridge when they come to it. Then he asks the captain if he has anything else to ask from that person. And if there is nothing else to ask, the captain can dispose of this person as he wishes. But that person says Wang asks him to release him if he answers all the questions. And now when he answers all questions, so he must fulfill his commitment. Wang laughs and says, he said if he is in a good mood, he will consider letting him go if he answers his questions. But unfortunately, he is in a terrible mood right now, so he can't let him go. Then he kills that person. Captain says okay, he will start the car. Worst case scenario, they will lie about how on earth after finishing this job, the people from the Yao family in the other world should not come to earth looking for them and asks them to continue their journey to the Red Leaf Hills and get it over. He also wishes to drink the dwarf-made wine. A girl comes there and tells them they are human warriors from the Polaris Martial Arts Academy. He introduces herself as Nia and tells them their dwarf warriors are on their way to clear out the Wind Valley. They will join forces with Wang and his people. Wang says this is a dwarf, but she is pretty cute. Soon, her dwarf warriors arrive there and say Nia is still energetic like this. Their leader, Vak, says the Wind Valley is difficult to deal with. He also says, as for the others, it's whatever. But this guy, Wang, besides looking good, does not seem to be that strong. Wang says if he is handsome, then what bothers them? When Nia says about Wang that he is their honored guest, Vak calls him so ridiculous. Nia then says sorry T. Wang for Vak's behavior and says Vak is acting strange today and she does not know what's wrong with him. Wang says no problem, and let's hurry and set off. When they reach there, someone says the Gale Wolf has taken over their wheat field. Their leader is a three-star beast very fast with sharp front claws, and its body is green. It is difficult to spot it hiding in the fields. Nia asks everyone to be careful now. Wang is looking all around in search of Gale Wolves and asks where they are hiding. They came soon. Wang says this is a piece of cake. The Gale Mantis is not as scary as the rumors claim. Captain Lin also shouts to see the Gale Mantis and says they should not lose to Brother Wang Tang and comes to kill it. After killing the Gale Mantis, Lin captures it in his hands and says only their forelegs pose a more significant threat to them, so cut them off first. Liu says okay, boss, she will cut them off. Vak observes these humans are too strong. Nia asks warriors not to let their guards down because the Gale Mantis King may appear anytime. Wang says this is weird, that he did not see the Gale Mantis King yet. Suddenly the Gale Mantis King appears on the back of Nia, and Wang asks her to watch her back. When she turns around, she becomes frightened. Vak also yells to see it. Wang says the Gale Mantis King was hiding there, but his spiritual vision did not detect it. He says the King is just on time, as he has been waiting for it for a long time. He runs toward the King to attack fiercely. Soon, he instantly killed the Gale Mantis King. Nia says no one will believe him if he says he is a one-star soldier. They say thanks to him, on which he says it was his job. 
he then tells the Gale Mantis King has 36 points of wind attribute fundamental energy and a Gale strength skill. He says no and wonders if his spiritual vision did not detect it, it had a stealth talent. The captain says he did not expect him to improve so much within a short period, and he is a genius indeed. Then, he asks his teammates to loot the battlefield quickly. There are many valuable body parts on the Gale Mantises to be sold. Later, they come to the Polaris Academy branch in the alternate dimension. Captain Lin gets appreciation from people as they manage to complete the mission while bringing a newbie along. Captain Lin says it's just luck and tells Wang is no newbie. Then, the platoon leader from the Crimson Tiger Legion arrives and stops Lin Jan. He says he is carrying out a special mission and officially notifies him that his War Tiger squad has been recruited by himself. When Captain Lin says he wants to know why the army wants to recruit them, the platoon leader says it is classified information and he cannot tell him. Wang says unless there is an emergency, the army rarely recruits independent martial artists. He then says to officers that they cannot just sacrifice themselves without knowing the reason. But the platoon leader becomes angry and calls Wang a rookie and asks him to watch his mouth. Wang also becomes furious and says if he is a rookie, then judging from his badge, the platoon leader is also a sergeant. That platoon leader asks him what he wants to say. Wang shows him a card and asks to have a look at it. This card is a sergeant's military title. When he sees it, the platoon leader says this brat is 20 years younger than him. He is still a student but has the same military title as him and thinks about what great deeds this kid has achieved. Then he apologizes for his rudeness and asks them to talk somewhere quieter. Then he says he was worried that he would shake the army's morale if he told the truth. But since that is the case, he will tell them the truth now. The military recruits independent martial artists because they found a group of miasmic ghouls. They discovered a high chance of high-grade fiends among the ghouls. They have intelligence and are no different from the ordinary humans. They even tempted some humans to become their spies. He tells further. Captain Lin is shocked to hear about it while thinking about the high-grade miasmic ghouls. He says it sounds very challenging, but he is sure that he may be able to do it with his current strength.